Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed and now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Everybody and welcome in to the Robertsons here on the Penny Bloom Podcast. I'm Colton Robertson. I'm joined by my father, Justin Robertson. What's up, Pops? Good evening. Hello there. I'm so, uh, quite the day. Quite yeah, the day. great Chief, day. Sunday, great day. Fun day. Great day. Yeah, we went to the pumpkin patch. Pumpkin patch. We're going to go to the pumpkin patch. The pumpkin, pumpkin patch. The pumpkin patch. patch. We're going to go to the pumpkin patch and pick, pick out, out a pumpkin, pumpkin today. today. Yep, that's, uh, but we did not pick out pumpkins. We didn't pick out pumpkins. Pumpkins are already picked. They've been there. They're had on the some, porch. Had some fun, though. Pumpkins on the porch. They're there. Yes, sir. Um, but yeah, it was a fun time. Uh, Chiefs bye week. Uh, but nonetheless, football was on. And it's story time for you. Yeah. So. Yeah, you got a, you got a, a hot one. A hot one. Um, Let's go. I'm undefeated today. Oh, on my picks. On your picks. Yes, that's a that's that's big. I didn't I didn't get the Thursday night game right, but that doesn't really matter pertaining to my story here. Okay. Um, you're you're undefeated. So, straight up. Straight up on straight Sunday. Straight up on Sunday. All right. Um, Friday. This is ahead of the Bengals Giants game. By the way, by the time I put this out, chance that game's over might not matter. Whatever. Um, on Friday mornings, when I'm doing the picks for the dispatch, yes, Joseph has this app called Redacted. Okay. He gets a free dollar to bet, and what he puts in is a 12-leg parlay on my picks. Oh. He put one of the fucking teams in wrong, and it doesn't oh, matter. No. I, I'm, I'm 11 for 11 on Sunday today. He is... He better be fucking praying the so, Bengals win tonight, buddy. It doesn't matter. Money lines didn't matter. None of it matters. It's win versus loss, straight up. Okay. Yeah. So he put in... He put in the Raiders when I picked the Steelers. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, so I've already given him shit. Oh, no. I've already given him shit about it. He already feels what, terrible. Okay, what would it have... The payout has like, he always done that? Like, hey, He does we, it every week. If we win, if I yeah, win it... Yeah, like, you hey, get a certain amount, I get a certain amount, yeah. Uh, what uh, was the payout? It's like 300-something. A buck for a dollar bet. Yeah, um, yeah. Gamble, so I would have I would have gotten like a hundred and seventy five bucks. Damn, today or like that, which would have been very well. Nice. But it, but also, it all hinges on tonight's game. It does, which is why I'm it has saying nothing to do with the Monday night game. It was just Sunday. Just Sunday because the, the max it allows is twelve. Okay, um, there were eleven so games. Who today did you and pick tonight? Game. Just so we, all... I picked the Giants. Um, okay, I took a big swing and picked the Giants, and he's fucking lucky. I took a big swing and picked the Giants. True. Um, so. I'm gonna take out. His, way, I'm gonna take out his fucking kneecaps. Yeah, the Giants. You're gonna fucking sweep away. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you? So, are you hoping? I'm hoping the Bengals win now. Oh, okay. I want you're... the Bengals to win. <laughs> um, I didn't know if you were like. Well, I principally I... do not root for the Bengals. I'm rooting for the Bengals. For the Bengals. Like that way, it's like it, uh, no I wouldn't done. have won. It, no it, harm it's, done. Uh, yeah, he he fucked you know. up, but it wouldn't have mattered. Yes, it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, see, and, and I actually don't have any animosity about this. There's no actual money lost. I didn't put any money down. See, I'm a venge- I'm a vengeful motherfucker. Yeah, I I would. I, in fact, I am now rooting for the Giants tonight. <laughs> Why? Because fuck Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts me, not Joe. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I mean, it would hurt like, him. He yeah. already feels bad. about No, I'm sure. He does. Yeah, he already I'm, feels bad I'm, about I'm it. I'm kidding. Of no, course, yeah, but... I know. But that that is what uh, I I was like. You might owe me 175 dollars. Uh, so you know that. Uh, but he's like, hey, I'm the one to put the bet down. Exactly. You put it down. Exactly. So like. That's, your why, dollar down, and that's bro. why I can only be so upset. How does he do that if it's not legal um, in Missouri? I don't know what the deal with Redacted. the is. Um I'm assuming that because it's based off win loss and not money lines, there's some sort of Yeah. Well, I mean it's it's probably likely certainly illegal. But probably that's okay. redacted. Sorry. Redacted. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I'll ble- that'll be a redacted. redacted. Yeah, that'll redacted. get redacted. Oh. Um 
But, okay, uh, but yeah, well, now it, it does add a little more juice to the game. For yeah, no, life. now I'm excited for Sunday night football game yeah. that I was not excited yeah. about. The Bengals versus Giants is an ugly fucking game. Yeah, I wonder um, what the points were on that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure the Bengals are are favored. Yeah. Um, oh, man, I texted him earlier, um, and I said, I, I, I texted him, I go, yo, do I remember correctly that the $1 bet only allows you to plug in an 11-leg parlay? Um, because uh, if so, and I had the little uh emoji where he's like peeking through his fingers. He says it allows a twelve leg, and he was like, "You already have eleven wins." And I said, "Oh, dude, we really want the Giants to win tonight. Like, we really, really want the Giants oh, to win tonight." Because you had and you um, have receipts. Yes, like it's recorded. Yes, that you picked. The I did Steelers, pick the Steelers, and he um, fucked up. And, and he says, the... "He says, dang, yeah, I had the Raiders slotted in, and once one is wrong, there is no partial payouts or anything like that." I said, "Oh, did I pick the Raiders?" Yeah, I had the Steelers really... in my notes. Uh, um, and he goes, all caps, no. Oh, oh he didn't <laughs> like, even realize it until yeah, right then. He didn't realize it until I pointed Poor it Joe, out. Joe, Joe. Yeah, I love you, man. I'm sorry that uh, this this happened to you. It's your fault. But, you know, um, hey, look, we can't can't get too mad at him. He's one no, place in the bet. No, he's the one place in the he's bet. He's the one with the illegal app on his he's, phone. He's the one with the he's, app on he's, his phone. He's running the he's, risk. He's doing the risk. I'm yeah. reaping the he's reward. He's got all the skin in the game, Yes, guy. He's he got does. a dollar. Exactly. And it's know. not, it's a free dollar though. It's not a dollar. <laughs> it's not, that's, there is no loss <laughs> mon- no monetarily. Loss. That's why right. like, I can't even be that mad. I get a certain sense of pride and like, I realize you can only succeed once you've recognized your failure. This, this week, whenever it's I powerful. did the dispatch. It's powerful stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went on and I was like, I realize I know absolutely nothing. Like throughout the season, I'm like 35 and 29 going into, going into okay. this week. Okay. So I'm pretty close to 500. I'm above yeah, 500. Not, not great. Not great. Yeah. Yeah. Not great. And so great. I, I, I opened up with that. I was like, so here's the deal. I'm actually not very good at this. So you had a fucking breakout weekend. I had too. a fucking great this week. This was it. This, this was, was probably, it. look, I don't want to pile on. This is probably your best shot at winning a party. Yes, there's year. no fucking way we yeah, do it. Yeah, you're not. Um, I'm never you're doing You're going to fucking again. chase that. That's why I'm you're like, chase you that fucking party motherfucker. <laughs> uh, no, but, uh, yeah, so that sucks. That's, uh, but yeah. all in all, it's been a good, it's been a good Sunday. Oh, it's been um, awesome. It's been nice. And, uh, it, it, frankly, it, it puts the pressure on in it, tonight's game, but it also takes the pressure off to a degree. Yeah, you know, like it's, it's already done. done. There's nothing done, that can yeah. happen. Now I'm not in it for the money. Now I'm in it for knowing that I wasn't going to win it Who anyway. Who picks the Raiders? Um, Joe, apparently, I on know. accident. Who, um, just, yeah, so he, he puts it in as it on, I'm doing it, and sometimes he has a tough time keeping up with yeah. me, and I think that I said Raiders. And so you should here, slow down. You know, I should. So it really is your fault. Yeah, it is. It's all your. It's fault. ultimately mine. Yeah. It's ulti- the blame is mine. It's totally your uh, fault. Joe, all's forgiven. Um, but uh, yeah, we got a good show today. <laughs> uh, mein Vater here. He mm. finished Shogun. I did. As I, did I as I recommended, and uh, I I officially finished the Barrel. I had a couple thoughts on from last week. And how then, how funny is it that I recommended a show that you actually finished? That you have not. That I have not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my bad. Yeah. No. So uh, spoiler free. Of course, I will not. I will not spoil anything yeah. for you. But uh, that'd be cool if you did not. And we're actually going to skip divisional dons this week. Yeah, there sorry. will be no divisional dons because our top five dead or alive was extended yeah. to a top ten, so we don't have to do it again. You feel me? Yeah, a top ten, but what's interesting is we are going to do it. We're probably going to do it again because top ten, yeah. and we'll probably do it again. Um, so our top ten today is top ten favorite music groups. Music groups can be a band, can be a band, uh, you know, boy uh, band, boy just band, sings. rock band, uh, R and B group, R and B. Yeah, and we left off duos. We did leave out duos, and we also left out rap. And that does not mean that we think lesser of rap. In fact, it's quite the opposite. We tend to think more of rap, because if we included rap, there'd be just like a couple... Like yeah, classic was, bands and a bunch it's really of rap my, groups. It's really my fault. I was um, totally overwhelmed by if I included rap. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it, ten wouldn't have been enough. Yeah. So then it's like, all right. So we decided, okay, let's, we'll do let's this do, and we'll, we'll, we'll return and, to it for rap. So I'm telling you here now, you didn't know this, but like I know you just said R&B. I actually took out I, – I didn't do any R&B either. Mm, okay. In this one. Like, so sorry if you did and shit. Um, I actually don't have an R and B group. Um, okay. I have a soul group, but not an R and B group. I mean, I um, kind of have a soul group. Anyway, we'll get to it. Yeah, but, we'll get to it. But um, I think we talked about doing a a rap, and so then I thought, well, 
I'm just going to throw R&B. I didn't have a lot of R&B, honestly. Mm-hmm. And right. so it was like, but I, I had a few. Yeah. Like I had. Enough yeah. to shake up your top 10. Yeah. I get that. I get that. That I, that I will include in the, you know. Mm-hmm. No, so. I actually I actually do not have an R&B that I recall off the top of my head. So that's good to know. Uh, yeah. Regardless, uh, we will we will return to that topic one day when we do maybe rap slash R&B now. Yes, but, sir. Uh, yeah, then we'll uh, we'll get into it. So you finished Shogun. I did finish Shogun. How'd you uh, How'd you feel about it? Um, I mean, I, I I thought that they wrapped it up. They wrapped it up well. I mean, you know, I didn't like. I mean, can I? Am, am I spoiling here? Uh, yeah, we'll go spoiler. Start spoiler free as much as you can, but okay. uh, And then we'll. I mean, unless you want to jump right in. If you want to jump right in, fuck it. Spoilers are coming. Well, I mean, it Shogun, was really. Yeah. I kind of talked a little bit about. How it reminded me of uh, the Last Samurai mm-hmm. with Tom Cruise, and that still stands. I mean, that um, it was it was during I think the Civil War actually, or after the yeah. Civil Wars when that one was timed. So this one was more like in the 1400s. Yeah. So they're obviously different. The Magellan there. Pass, and yeah, all that good yeah. stuff. Um, but I thought like um, the character development, all the characters were amazing. Um, I ended up really liking. Uh, Tan, uh, Tadanobu or Tadanobu yeah Tadanato Asomo mm-hmm. he's the dude do you know who I'm talking about yes so he's the guy that was kind of like the shady one that mm-hmm. was like trying to play both sides yeah 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 he's endearing I I, I respect the hustle mm-hmm. you know and he was kind of a dumbass about it 100% he did, He was not good at it no and over his head and and his, he ended up losing his head as yes. a result of that yeah <laughs> and uh, but he still was like he understood like the game's the game. Yeah. And I if know he got fucked if he if he yeah. lost, he knew he lost. He knew, you know. Yeah, he knew he was gonna lose his head over it. And and that and just the way he would laugh shit off, like mm-hmm. it it reminded me, I think we talked about it, like of the he's just the most relatable because the show is so just uh like based on honor. Yeah. And you know, if an you, honor if, we don't really understand. An honor we don't understand, yeah. and you know, people are if I if if someone speaks out a line, then they fucking die. Yeah. You know, and and they're willing, and they're they like, volunteer to die. Yes, it's not like, like you're being put to death. Like, it's like, oh shit, my bad. Should I kill myself? Right. Yeah. Like, the, you know, I'm not. I can't relate to that, obviously. Mm-hmm. And where it's like, I disrespected you. I'm going to apologize, and I'm going to be like, man, really, that's 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 my bad. I'm going to own that. But their shit was like, "Hey, I'm sorry. I've I've shamed myself. Yeah, I fucked and, up bad. And now I'm willing. I'm willing to. I will cut my stomach open. And, and, and you then will you. Cut off my and head. then you cut off my head. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So with all that, he was the most relatable in terms of like there were times he would just shit was going sideways for him, you know. And we've all been there where like the things that are out of our control, mm. and all you can do is kind of laugh. Yeah. Like, God yes. damn, is this like man? Here we are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wow. And that's, that's, I loved him for that. Like mm-hmm. he, um, he, he kept trying to, uh, you know, like, do- you know, dodge and weave and, and survive. But it, in the end it was like, he wasn't going. Somewhere. And that scene, whenever, uh, Toranaga speaks to him on the cliff side about his plan yeah. and what he's going to do. And, you know, yeah. it's, it's intercutting with the, like what is going to come going to, to happen. pass. And yeah. like, that's why I'm really, really intrigued by the prospect that this show will have a season two and a season three. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they will. And I mean, I know they're going to, yes, that's and it's been confirmed. And I, I think they're going to do it even though they did a great job of like <clears throat> putting a bow on it in a way like they, like I think originally you were like, they finished the story. Yeah. You know? it's like a, it's, it was conceptualized yeah. as a mini series and they were adapting a book, which is now completed. Yeah. And it, it and it was great. I mean, yes. they, they nailed they it. They did it wonderfully. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I like how, uh, engine, engine son ends up being basically, uh, his Navy, you know, yeah. he, in the end he's like, pull that boat out, build me a fleet, train yeah. my guys. Yeah. And that's all that dude wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, I, w- I was satisfied with that. Blackthorn, man. He's a real motherfucker right yeah, there. Yeah, he, um, he's good shit. Um, now, and then Lady uh, Mariko. Mariko, yeah. yeah um, Love her. She's I, the best, man. She was, she was amazing. and She won an Emmy. She actually did. She was a best actress, best right. lead actress, and Hiroyuki Sonata won best lead actor. I'm pretty sure they also nabbed best supporting actor, which is I can't remember which actor got that, but uh, 
Yeah, they were fucking good. Oh, amazing. I mean, yeah, Tornaga was, I mean, he could finesse everybody. I mean, he mm-hmm. was like two steps ahead of everybody. Um, and even though, you know, uh, Lady Mariko goes, you know, it goes the way it goes for her. Mm-hmm. Um, you kind of knew that's how it was going to happen. It was just a matter of how it was going to happen. Right. Um, no, I'm, I, I'd be, I'm pumped for whatever, you know, se- season two, season three, whenever that happens in five years or whatever, if I'm still here, <laughs> if I'm me. still here, <laughs> I sure uh, hope so. By the time it, by the time they like get around to mm-hmm. releasing it, but no, great, great, uh, suggestion. I appreciate it. It was of good. Course. I really enjoyed of course. it. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it was a uh, Kashigi, uh, Yab- oh, Yabushige, uh, the guy, the guy who, the guy you liked, the character you liked, Kashigi Yabushige. Um, he got nominated for best supporting actor, but did not win, which is unfortunate. Um, oh, Kashigi. Yeah, Kashigi Yabushige. I knew who you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, Kashigi. But I, I'm sorry. I, I actually pulled you were my reading phone the out actor's the first name. Fucking time that we've been doing this. Uh, yeah, I read yeah, the actor. Tadanobu name. Asano. Yes. yes. And, that, and I knew who you were talking about because I remember Kashi- seeing that name. Kashigi, yeah. Yeah, Yabushige. But uh, yeah, won 18 Emmys, uh, including Outstanding Drama, Lead Actor, Lead Actress, Outstanding Directing, Outstanding Period Costumes, Outstanding Production Design, Outstanding Picture Editing, Outstanding Sound Editing, Outstanding Stunt yeah. Performance. Like, just everything it could have won, it fucking did. And I, um, I think that there's, I, I hope and I expect that, that was pretty accurate. Yeah, to what, it felt like, like that it. was mm-hmm. like at that time and in that at that place. Right. Um, I, I loved the little details, of like he, even how the females would like walk really short strides, pigeon toed, like mm-hmm. really closed pigeon, like. And if it would pan up where you didn't see their feet, it looked kind of like they were just floating. Yeah, you know, right. Just like walk, you know. Um, their robes wouldn't crease when they took steps and stuff. Right. Like, yeah, no, it's re- it's really cool. Just the discipline of that, mm-hmm. of all of them. And that's what's, that's what's ultimately really cool about the way it wins over Blackthorn in a way. Like, you know, he, right. he mean, learns at, the honor. <laughs> that's you know? what's funny is it's totally related. Like, if I'm Blackthorn and I'm dropped in that motherfucker, I'm like, what are we doing? Yeah, you know, I got like, He's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, just going off. Uh, just losing his mind. Like, mm-hmm. what the fuck is this? It takes we're really, him a while. We're really, it takes it, him it a does. while. And he's like, we're just killing, you know, we're just, yeah. we're out here killing ourselves, guys. Mm-hmm. That's, but he, he finally, and he, I mean, he, I think even at the end, it, it's not like he's bought in. No, he's just accepting He's accepting lot. it. Yeah. Because he's getting He's invaluable. He yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He's valuable. But I loved his character. Oh, he's fantastic, and his relationship with Mariko is one of the one of the best parts of the show. The, yeah. the little meaningful hand touches and stuff. I always yeah. I always appreciate the like what they they want, what they can't have, but ultimately they give in and all that stuff. That's one of my favorite little tropes in romance stuff. Yeah. So uh, I, I really dug that. But uh, yeah, no, uh, Cosmo Jarvis as John Blackthorne, which is that's a fucking uh, outstanding yeah, name, incredible Cosmo name, Jarvis. Cosmo Jarvis. Uh, what is the charge? Yeah, eating a meal. A succulent Chinese, Chinese meal. meal. That's who he always reminds me of every time. Yeah, I can't I, get I that love, out of my head. It. It, it's just this like, is oh democracy manifest. manifest. That's who he reminds me of so yeah. hard. But because uh, he is over the top with it. Oh, one hundred percent. Like the uh, part whenever they're trying to sneak out of the castle, and he's like, "That is not how you treat a lady." lady. You yeah. know, that, that's that's specifically when I'm like, "Oh, he's channeling that guy hard." There, completely. Um, so, yeah, it really, I mean, just overall, really, really good. And I mean, Toranaga, I think. Uh, Hiroyuki Shina- Sonata, Sonata, Sh- yeah. Sonata, yeah. Um, he's been in so much oh, stuff. Been around. He a was in Last time. Samurai. Yes, he um, was. He was outstanding in it, and I think I told you like you go into it, and he's the Top Gun. He, he, well, he's like he's the good guy. Yeah, you go into it thinking the way it's and, and this he, is the protagonist. Yes, yeah. and he is. Mm-hmm. But he ain't always a good guy. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I mean he 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 got what he wanted. Mm-hmm. He figured out a way to get what. He, I mean, he was a cunning and motherfucker. The thing he was denying, he wanted the whole fucking time. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it's 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 in your family. It's like in your blood. You you come from a line of shoguns. You know, like uh, you yeah. you want the title. He's like, no, I don't. No. And all the while, he's working to get the fucking title. The entire time. Oh, he's so fucking cool. Yeah, he's so cool. He was. Um, 
Yeah, so I, I I remember reading a tweet before I started Shogun, which kind of motivated me to start Shogun, which I told you about, um, which is that Shogun is like Game of Thrones if Ned Stark was smart. Yeah, you told um, me about that, and and it is because his character is you know essentially occupies the same space. Yes, uh, he's the head of a very powerful family and very yeah. powerful house. He has the means to take over if he sees fit. You know, obviously Ned's honor is different because he doesn't want to. Um, Right, where, his motivations aren't there. But he's happy with reco- his shit up yes, north. If he'd recognize that he was fit for it and probably the right choice, probably then could have go. done exactly this. Right. You know, um, that so like, that's what's that's what I really dig about it is that it it does feel like a it felt like a return to form for prestige dramas. You know, yeah. like it felt like we we were kind of worried in the wake of Succession ending and Barry ending and. All, like uh, Better Call Saul came to an end and all this right. stuff, and it was like, well, oh, are we gonna sure. are we gonna have anything that reaches this height again? Yeah, and I feel like Shogun kind of immediately. Yeah, did. it did, and in, in a matter of one season. I yeah, one hundred percent, fucking good. And it was that it was good enough to where they they adapted like, that. Got to figure this. And they out. were like, we're gonna make more of this. Yeah. Um, and they ultimately like they were originally campaigning for because the miniseries have like whole separate categories at the Emmys. Like if you're a miniseries, you have your own shit. Yeah. Um, and they had to, they pivoted to taking over the drama category and they fucking ran it. Um, so they would have ran the miniseries too, you know, like it like no matter sure. where they were, they were going to fucking dominate it. And I think that that's, that speaks to just how fucking good it was. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I really, really love that show. So I'm excited. I, it motivated me to read the book it was adapted from, uh, it's two parts. Actually, I only read the first part. It only goes up to spoilers again, the night that Mariko and Anjan, sleep together but then she doesn't act like she remembers it which is fucking wild yeah you know like she <laughs> acts like it didn't happen well it, I, I don't know do we did we talk about this at all like we yeah. talked so much did we talk about it off the off the podcast yes we talked okay. about this off the podcast okay. where we were talking about how like uh she obviously knows it but it was kind of the way that was like you know don't yeah she they, they this didn't happen essentially yes. yeah they have a, a wonderful passionate night mm-hmm. <laughs> and then and so yeah, then so I'm book like, book one ends with the wonderful passionate night, and I'm assuming book two starts with her being like, it didn't fucking happen. Right. But I never read book two. Um, it, it even had my dumb ass going, well, wait, did I think that was a different Japanese you know, wait, lady am I, there? Am, am I, I being guilty? Racist? Of, yeah, am I, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, am I guilty of like they all look the same right now? Because no, yeah, I no. don't. It was. It, uh, it, if the woman wasn't Mariko, the show is doing a thing where at least Blackthorn is seeing Mariko. You know right. what I'm saying? Like that and is it, that it is the actress. Her. It, it is the her. it is the yeah. actress. If it's not her, it's who Anjan wants, wants it, it to, to be, be, so that's who he's seeing. But I but I think it I think we can interpret it that it's it her. truly was yeah, her. It's her. She and she played like she was yes, like, yeah, hey, motherfucker, we're not Yeah. This One shit. of my other favorite And that details. was even before she found out her husband was actually alive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, she at that time I I'm I'm sure gave in a little bit because she thought well, my husband's dead. Yeah, and grieving, sacrificed is... himself, and let them all right, right. escape. Yeah. So, and I didn't really like. I don't really like that dude. Yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah, he sucks. And you seem cool. Um, yeah, you <laughs> but down, then she you a down ass white boy. You know, but I do respect that she didn't want anybody to find out even before she found out her husband 100%. was still alive. Yeah, no, that's she wasn't trying because like, that, that, that would there. bring her dishonor. You right, know? like, uh, but uh, one of my other favorite details about the show, and I understand why they did it. It's just funny within the context. Uh, I love Hiroyuki Sonata was very adamant that the people in these roles would be Japanese people. Yeah. You know, they are Japanese. We are speaking Japanese. We are not going to be speaking English and you're going to, you know, like that. He, he was adamant about that. Um, and I, I respect the was shit he out of that. A, a big decision maker in this yes, film? B- massive, massive producer. I mean, in the, in, um, oh, yes. Okay. Massive producing credit. I mean film, but yeah. Um, executive series. producer. Uh, shit, I didn't realize that. Uh, very ma- uh, close to a showrunner without writing it. Oh, uh, but okay. he was very collaborative in the creative process. Um, the funny part to me, um, which I get why they did again, every time they're speaking in English, they're not actually speaking in English. They're speaking Portuguese. Yeah. Notice is, that. Notice that early on. Yeah, it, it, fucking hysterical. Uh, it's, and it's almost like, thank you for doing that. For no. Us. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> like, like, because yeah, they're hammering, they're hammering English. the fact that yeah. they're speaking Portuguese. Yeah. When really I understand, I understand what, the what, fuck what they're saying. saying. <laughs> so it can't be Portuguese. <laughs> can't be Portuguese. And again, my dumb ass. I'm like. What? 
Are they speaking Portuguese? And I know <laughs> fucking yeah. I know that 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 they're uh, yeah. That that's one of my favorite. Fucking, that's one I of mean, my favorite details, and it's it's so funny just because like just principally them being like yeah, our, we will actually speak Japanese, yeah. but Portuguese we're gonna speak English. Yeah. We can't we can't do authenticity all the way through. We got to give you dumb uh, white people from America something to watch because yeah, you will not you will not put up us. with a foreign foreign and show. Really, I've never had an issue with. Um, subtitles like narcos and stuff Mm -hmm. like that like i've watched some really 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 good stuff that i had to i had to read i had to read yeah and this they could have done the whole show in a different language and it would have kept yes yeah i would have i would have kept watching no there's a great bong joon ho quote he he directed parasite which won best picture and best director in 2019 um i think it was at his oscars acceptance speech was which was just that once you can get over the one inch tall barrier of subtitles, you'll your world will be opened up to a whole different side of yeah. movies and film and culture. Um, and it, it, like Parasite was the first foreign film I ever watched. And then I was like, oh, shit, I can like stuff in other languages. And now a bunch of like a bunch of my favorite movies ever are in o- other other yeah, languages. I, I, <laughs> my, my first experience with um, like modern experience with with subtitles uh was peaky blinders yeah and they're speaking english yes they are but i i that's the first time there. i ever turned close caption on mm-hmm. once you because do, I, you can't turn it off dude, either it's rough it's bad i i can't i i do not watch anything without now if it's like football or something like that if it's yeah sport, i can't do that but if it's a movie or a show i throw it on there mm-hmm. it's weird it's a weird i don't even I have know a why tough the time paying is. attention without them yeah it does, and that's retaining true. It information, does lock me in. yeah. Um, like, well, and I, I even I don't know what it is. Like, I I think it's kind of the same as like you, you remember stuff better if you write it down. Right. You know, like if you read it, it's there. You know, like sometimes if I'm just watching something, yeah, I'm listening, but I'm not really listening. I'm not I, locked in. I'm not thinking about. I almost it, you know? gave up on Peaky Blinders because I couldn't I couldn't understand what they were saying, mm-hmm. and so I'm like, well, that's fuck one of those it. ones I'm I need to work on. There. on. <sighs> Never watched Peaky Blinders, and I love me some Killian Murphy. Um, and it, but after that, it just stuck. Like yeah. the whole fucking closed captioning mm-hmm. just stuck after that. Yeah. But anyway, so Bear, I and did finish wanna, the Bear. Yeah. Um, I, well, well, I'll keep this brief since I talked about it a lot last weekend with stuff that you've actually seen. So uh, this will be spoiler spoilers or uh, spoiler free. Um, the Bear. That. Season three is every bit as good as the show has been. Um, it's nice and slowly paced the way the first two seasons are. You know, it's 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 cool to watch a show where the implications aren't world ending or world changing or right. You know, like uh, and they they are world ending, I suppose, for certain characters. For them, like, yeah. You know, like if, yeah, specifically. if things don't go like it's it's so funny to be like the main thing you're stressing in season three is this review, the review of the new restaurant. Okay. Is that like Michelin? Is it a yeah, Michelin? Well, they they're trying to get their star, but that's not really what it is. It's it's like a, the Chicago Tribune. Okay. Came in and ate at their restaurant and they're they're writing a review about it. And the that is what you're stressing the whole fucking season. Really? Um yeah, like you're you're waiting for this review to come in. Um the whole season? Exactly. And that's what's fascinating is that they're able to do so much that maintains the drama and the, the high stakes and stuff while that's like lurking in the background. Right. Like, you know, they know it's there. All this stress might be for nothing if you get a bad review. You know, like you, right. if you get a bad review, you it, none of this will fucking then, matter. You're right. done. You Why know, are we like, worried about exactly. it until that happens. So, and that's what makes season three really, really compelling is that like. It keeps you really, really locked in, and we already we already discussed this off mic too. Um, they split season three into two seasons ultimately. Yeah. Um, apparently, I told you about that Abon Moss Bachrock interview where he he said that they they filmed some of season four. He said they filmed enough for eighteen episodes, and which they is do badass, w- and they do ten episode seasons, which means that's right. most of season four. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's right. that's crazy. Um, and they, their production turnaround's insane, so we'll be seeing that within the next fucking year, which is crazy. Man, I um, wish they'd all figure that shit out. Every television show could benefit from it. But uh, season three is the first one uh, that needs the next season. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, you'd mention Seasons that. one and two. You know, you don't want them to be the end of the show, but they could have been. You know, yeah, like they could have been, and, and it would have been enough. Like, oh, enough man. was concluded. Yeah, yeah, you know, like ah oh, man, I would have really, really preferred. 
that we picked that up, you know, and we would have right. done something. Season two, less so, but season one for sure. Um, so this is the first time that, like, not necessarily, like, any cliffhanger, but it more It straight like, up ends with the title card to be continued. Yeah. You know, like, they're like, there's there's more story here. Um, so they're, they're, they're going to spend part of season four wrapping, wrapping up, up that season story. three. And if, if and Aban Mas Bakrak is to be believed, most of season four is wrapping up the season three storyline. And yeah. it's all one storyline. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so and I'm assuming maybe the way they do that is production on season four will likely be production on the end of season four and season five. And they'll right. just do all of it and then they'll space it out, you know? But uh, I don't know. Uh, that's that's all hearsay on my part. But uh, yeah, no, the bear fucking rocks. Yeah. Uh, it rules. So I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was it was a great I, time. I mean, I knew you would. Yeah, you'll you'll like season three, too. It gets it gets. I this think, was the I first think I season. I got through three episodes. Mm. This um, was the first season where. There probably is more drama than comedy. And there's always been more drama than comedy. Right. But I do feel I, like what I'm remembering they leaned more from season the three is was it just fucking there's not... tense. It took me much longer to get through season three than the first oh, two okay. seasons. Because there were times where I was like, a little heavier. I need to fucking put this down for, for, a, for a day or two. Right, you I know what break. I'm saying? It's just intense. And yeah. it's high stakes. And it's 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 go, 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 go. And right. um, that's what makes like the first episode of season three really good. Because it's... It's almost like a Fantasia where it's just music and Carmi's story. I don't know if you remember that episode where like it's a it's an intercutting between the present and the past. Yeah. And him in the walk in and him working at uh, working at the yeah. previous restaurants and stuff. And like the whole episode is like a 25 minute piece of music and it, it cutting in and Which out. Which is wild because you don't even I mean, I didn't even realize no, that watching it's fucking it. good. And yeah. then it ends and you're like. Oh wow, that was fucking great! And like barely anybody talks, and it's just like it's really, really good TV. So like that's why I, like I fucking love it. And like obviously they're getting more comfortable with what they're doing. They're taking bigger swings. Yeah, uh, more and, people. Well, are, they know they have a huge audience. Oh yeah, people are going to keep. Uh, more people are getting chances. Back. I told you like Iowa Debris got to direct an episode this season. Right. Um, and that was you a gave her. That, you gave her an Emmy. I did give her an Emmy. Yeah. I don't think she won an Emmy for that. By the way, oh really? Um, I don't think she won an Emmy for that. <laughs> I love that. Um, I know she won an Emmy, but I think it was for Best Supporting Actress or Best Lead Actress in a Comedy. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Let, well, I'll, I'll, I'll fact check myself right now. It's won 21 Emmys, which is crazy. Um, it's won Outstanding Lead Actor, Outstanding Supporting Actor for Abon Moss Bachrock, Outstanding Supporting Actress for Liza Colon Zayas, who is Tina. Oh, really? Um, yeah, that's cool. Good on Tina. Um, outstanding Directing for Fishes, the Christmas Fucking, episode. Yeah, yeah. Editing. Sound editing, sound mixing. Let's see. She didn't win, man. You, yeah, I might be. Why'd might you do that? Up. Guest actor John Bernthal has won an Emmy for it. Jamie Lee Curtis won best support, uh, best guest actress for it. Um, outstanding casting, outstanding. That's interesting. Like the guest actress category. I mean, she's in it quite a bit. Jamie well, Lee Curtis. Yeah. yeah, she pops up in. I think it's like if you're not in a certain amount of the show, you're not a supporting character. Yeah. You are a guest character. Um, and in season two specifically, she's in one episode. So you are a guest actor. Same yeah. with John Bernthal. Um, man, Iowa Debry has not won an Emmy for this. Fucking travesty. That's insane. She's been nominated. I could have... Okay, never mind. She has won. Um, Damn it, you were right the whole time. She won. Well, she won Outstanding Supporting Actress for season one. Oh, but uh, not on the direct... Not, not the directorial stuff. She actually wasn't nominated for that either. Um, so, my bad. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, I, I love the show, and I can't wait for season four. And Emily actually watched, like, the last few minutes of season three with me last night. Yeah. Even though she hasn't watched a fucking Any of it. it. Um, and she was like, yeah, we're going to have to watch this. You know oh, what I'm good. saying? Like, yeah. she's like, yeah, because the thing for her was that the drama was a bit too much for her. Like, it's just like, I thought the yeah, show was going to be fucking funny. You oh, know? Oh, uh, okay. We watched the first, I told you this when I watched it the first time. Um I was wa it was the same thing as like Better Call Saul. Do you remember when I kept watching Better Call Saul and I was like, "Holy shit, I fucking seen this." And I got to a certain point and I was like, "Okay, now I haven't watched this." Yeah. And it was like near the end of the first season. Yeah. The exact same thing happened with the bear. We got like 7 minutes into the season finale and we and stopped realized, watching. Oh, wow. Like we were just like, "I can't do this." <laughs> like I can't fucking do this. Uh, cuz that's right after the episode where Carmi loses his mind on everybody in the kitchen. Yeah. He's like, "What are you fucking doing to me? What are you fucking doing to me?" You know? Uh we were like, "Okay." Whew. 
I think it was just intense, and we were like, we'll come back to this eventually. And we just, just never, never did. Well, that's, um, yeah, we have a short attention span. There's mm-hmm. a lot of stuff I've left and been like, right. oh, wait. I should, I I should come back to that. Yeah, yeah or no, but, uh, did I even watch it? Right. No, but yeah, so the Bear Rocks uh, and, and Shogun Rocks, and that, that definitely between Andor and the Offer or Shogun and the Bear, I think we've got a, we had a better set of, uh, I, I loved, I love Andor and, and the the offer, but uh, Shogun and the Bear is kind of fucking an insane duo for yeah. us to have recommended each other. That's a, those are great shows, but uh, yeah, we might not be able to repeat that. Yeah, uh, it might be like my parlay. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, with that, I think we can move on to the top ten. You down for that? I think I am. I think it might be time. So we are yeah. doing we're doing our top so the ten top favorite 10. music groups or bands. Yeah. Um. No duos. No duos. No rap. Um, no rap. Like we said, that will be safe for a later date. We'll probably do a top five duos at some other point. We'll probably do top ten rap groups at a different point as well. Um, because off the top of my head, I'm like, bang, 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 bang. Yeah, bang. and I we're can, gonna like, like go when we go do go on that. Uh, look, it's it, if I can, let me preface this entire little segment with my list is probably not very good, um, because. From the time I was about 10 years old to the time I was now. Yeah, yeah. I have predominantly listened to rap music. Right. And um, I know I joke around, I fuck around and say, well, you know, I'm from Raytown, blah, blah, blah. It's, I, you, you have your taste. And I mean, no, like one of my best friends, David Shackelford, he's a, he's a country guy. Mm-hmm. He grew up in Raytown. Yeah. You know, right. um, he went and tried to record in Nashville as uh, shout out David Shea, by the way, if uh, that's a deep cut. That is a Fuck that is yeah. that is a lore drop I've never received. David I've Shea, never heard bro. that. Yeah, he's yeah. got an album cover and everything. Fuck yeah, he does. David Shea. But you know, so we grew up together, I mean, r- really close friends all the way through. Mm. So this list for me was really hard, man. Right. Because like everything I I mean, it was good though too because I realized, okay, yeah, mm-hmm. there, there was a lot of stuff other than rap I did right. listen to and enjoy. No, for sure. And so back to your point about like, it's not that we don't like rap; it's it's, it's more that a, we like rap more. Yeah, for um, me especially, like my list is just like, oh my god. No, um, and that's that is important too. I think that one of the things that's interesting for me is that there's this really crucial point in high school that I kind of view as a really important turning point for me, um, just on, I mean, on the surface level, obviously when I had my knee surgeries yeah, and obviously sports were no longer like, okay, that's probably not going to be my long term goal anymore. Yeah. Is playing sports. Um, and I, I, even though you could have still played baseball, I probably could have still played that's baseball. That's the dad that's in me saying di- that. We can talk about that. That'll be a later. different segment. Um, <laughs> 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 but, uh, I probably could have, but, uh, I didn't want to anymore. I was like, you know, I, I, opened, you I opened up to what I opened up to what other possibilities there were. And yeah. I was like, you know what? I actually like this. So uh, and the same thing happened with my tastes around that time. I started to expand because I was expanding my horizons in that regard. Right. I just kind of expanded all around me. Um, and it kind of led me to new genres of music. It led me to new types of movies you know i mentioned like last week we talked about the musicals and stuff i discovered la la land in 2017 when i was bedridden after my second knee surgery you know what i'm saying like that's that's when i that's when i watched that movie for the first time and i remember that vividly because i was actually on the phone with Tavares. we watched it like the same time at like 2 a.m it was fun it was a fun night you know um and so like that that's why like some of these have a sentimentality to them because of that um absolutely and uh a nostalgic attachment yeah and you know when it comes to rap music that's still where my heart lies um but there was a period that's a good boy yeah yeah, that's that's good that's good that's good my son son. (laughs) (laughs) no 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 that like it it absolutely is but but what's funny is i wish like when you say you opened up to other genres and stuff like I was so, I mean, for the most of my life, I've been just mm-hmm. closed off. Like, I, I appreciate other music, but it's like, I just, I don't fuck with a lot of other music. And actually, I was looking forward to this, yeah. specifically. Um, and one of these bands is a band I'd always heard of, obviously. Like, yeah. they are an iconic band, and I'd never, never listened Listen to, them to them until this week. And I was like... That's why they're one of the greatest bands of all time. Okay. You know, like I listened to like three or four of their albums, and I was. Are like, they on your top ten? Yes. 
Wow, I was you like, gained a top I 10. I gained a top 10. Of your favorite uh, ever. groups ever just this week. Easy. Like, it, it was Holy a no-doubter. Um, okay. and, and one of these is a more recent discovery, uh, like, within the last year. Um, I love that about you, too. You're willing to, like... I'm not... I'm I not didn't gonna... listen to shit, buddy. Like, I... No, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm 46. Yeah. I went off... A lot of times, you know, in these things, I'm going off of how, mm-hmm. like, in those moments... Right. Like, I felt this way at this yeah, time. Yeah, my I life, how that. I felt, yeah. what it, how it impacted, and so some of them are going to be no right. Well, that's <laughs> probably the fun of laughed these. at. That's if why anybody listens. When me and Joe do top tens or, or anything like that, yeah, we interpret certain segments completely differently. Right. Uh, I'll come on and I'll be like, "That is not at all how I thought of this," but I like that. That's how you thought of this. Right. You know, like that's kind of the point of it. That's why I like doing them. So, like, uh, let's let's start with some honorable mentions. Maybe some iconic bands that didn't quite make the cut for you. Um, okay. What, what what have you got outside of your top ten? So outside, um, Def Leppard didn't make it. Didn't make mine either. And I mean, for my it, this is going to be interesting because you know the difference in generation. Def Leppard was huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pour some sugar on me it was fucking like you couldn't go. Five, dude, you could go five minutes without hearing that on FM radio. Um, Queen, although Queen I, was tough, man. I, I wanted to include Queen. The reason I wanted to include Queen, if I could, really quick, is because they have songs that from the time you're young you f- yeah, I mean, yeah like i yeah, we will I, rock I actually you. talked about that last week when you i did, was like yeah. there are some things you are born knowing and we, that's one of those we will rock you we are the champions mm-hmm. that's mean, another one it's another yeah. one and then around Bohemian Rhapsody around, and, yeah around Wayne's World and all that shit with Bohemian I mean so but i didn't include i mean chicago i love i love the band chicago mm mm-hmm. Um, I loved, bro. I loved Rascal Flats. Yeah, Rascal yeah. Flats is a good fucking band. They yeah, have tons yeah. of really good songs. Did not make it. Leonard Skinner did not make it. Mm. Um, Led Zeppelin didn't make mine. See, Led Zeppelin isn't even on my list, right? B- because that and I, that's why my list for people that like love rock bands, they're right. gonna hate my fucking list. Well, because and that's, uh, I didn't. I, Led Zeppelin. Who gives a fuck? Rolling Stones, sorry, who gives a fuck? Like right. I, they never did it for me. Metallica yeah. is not on my list. Yeah, it's no, not you just, even on my you fucking just named top three 22. bands that are not on mine. They're either. not because uh, I just didn't. I never I just connected didn't with the fuck with and them. hard rock specifically. Never really been my bag. Um, ZZ Top, no a ZZ Top. I yeah, I don't. I don't care. You know, like uh, um, and it, it, everybody. You know, to each their own. I'm obviously never going to judge anybody for their taste. No, Everybody's got no, it, you know? absolutely um, not. That, but like that's those are really good examples of things like Led Zeppelin. I actually do quite enjoy Led Zeppelin. Um, I mean, there's like I looked up. I made the mistake of looking up like all time greatest groups mm-hmm. and groups for me. I was hoping would be like not just bands, right? But, but they're mostly like the bands. top fifty were all fucking bands. Yeah. Led Zeppelin was number one on a lot of these like respected publication Mm -hmm. you know list yeah they're great Um, they are and that's the thing is that i can always recognize that like the rolling stones obviously a great band i i don't i don't really love their music you know like uh it's it's just not it's not for me uh the kinks i know the kinks are really good and i actually like a few of the kinks songs yeah but they're not that was another thing good i'm glad Um, you bring that up because there's some that like there's like one song i love fuck i mean there's a rolling stone song that i absolutely love Oh, dude! But like, uh, Strangers I, by the Kinks, one of my favorite songs of all time. But like, I don't love much else by them. Um, and that's uh, so that that's kind of ACDC not in there. Um, the Grateful Dead not in there. Um, see, ACDC was that was a that was that was a tough cut. It was a tough cut for me. Gotcha. Okay. Um, that's kind of like a for some reason maybe like a football thing. Mm-hmm. Like there was a lot of, uh, I mean that I I just equate that or i correlate that to football right and like a certain group of friends no i get a lot of ac i get that it was it was um a couple a couple other ones that didn't quite make it that were were tougher cuts for me um contemporarily i i had a really tough time including anybody modernly um yeah i I have i have that surprises me i mean i have one or two bands that i'm like one of them i could like my 10 I could have swapped for a more iconic band and it wouldn't have bothered me at all. It's just that like, I'm like, I wanted to spread the love to something a little more contemporary. So one of the contemporary ones that didn't make my 10 that I was debating was Paramore, 
with Haley Williams. Um, oh yes, I love Paramore. Familiar. I love Paramore's music. Um, but and I love their versatility and I love the way that they can bend genres and stuff. But they're they're just not quite what I was looking for. You know. Um, yeah. Uh, they've got some hits, absolute hits, uh, classics, but uh, couldn't couldn't quite get there. The Cranberries, uh, that's yeah. not very contemporary, but but uh, I mean en- enough. I yeah. my, I struggled with I struggled with like newer groups or bands because I think I've told you like I have a tough time like really keeping up with Looking music into now. It. Yeah, um, and so with rap being my preference, I make that a priority, mm-hmm. and so any other type of genre of music, I- I'm behind on rap and R and B. So I'm way the fucking behind on, on everything contemporary, else. Yeah, whether yeah. it be pop or, or whatever Indie, it is. Indie, alt, yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's why, like, I mean, and there's something to be said for that where the same thing happens with movies for me. I'm like, I could watch this new piece of shit on Netflix with Ryan Reynolds and Ryan Gosling. Right. <laughs> Or right. I could watch a movie that I know is well renowned and loved that I've never seen before. Correct. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to watch the one that I know is well renowned and loved that I've never seen before. That's from the 80s or 90s or something. You know? So like, all, like the newest band on here that like there's one still releasing music and one their last album was 2015. Um, okay. And that's the newest. That is the newest th- I have on here. Um, Okay. Yeah. So if I mean, if you'd like, we can we can go ahead and take her on in. Yeah. Um, and having said that whole thing, I went through the whole rock thing. A lot of before them before be... I was introduced to, before I knew what rap was. There's going to be some shit on here that yeah, yeah yeah, and even yeah even after so, I mean a lot of a lot of mine's rock too, but not hard rock. You know, like, I yeah. think there's a line there. There's yeah. I mean, I, I I went through it. So I started with like twenty or twenty five. And then I like put what I thought were the numbers down in mm-hmm. my notes. Right. Like, this is, I think this is 10, this is 9, yeah. this is 8. I fucked with that for like 10 minutes, switched numbers around, then started a new note yeah, to give me to a clean it, yeah. 1 through 10. Ended up and doing the same the, thing. The stuff that was 1 through 10 on my, on my master list. Did not end up one through ten. <laughs> I on see. My final that's list. funny. So, well, that's that's illuminating. You know, like yeah. you know, you know what you're looking for at that point. With that, you want me to start? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Okay, number ten. Huey Lewis and the News. Fuck yeah, dude. Huey Lewis and the News is good. I mean, come on. Uh, like, and there's a lot of nostalgia there. Like Huey Lewis hit me on the way home. So I started this list three fucking days ago. Right. Huey Lewis and the News hit me. For for no other reason other than God wanted me to put them on this list. Right. On the way home from the pumpkin patch today. Fuck yeah. So so 10 for me is fun. I mean, I, I there's very few times that I don't feel good hearing a fucking Huey Lewis in the news song. There you go. That's and all that matters. Was, I mean, they they were everywhere in, mm-hmm. like in, the, in the 80s. Like, yeah. Soundtracks. I mean, MTV, everything. So Huey Lewis in the news. Huey Lewis in the news. I like that. See, I, I'm starting from a similar spot in yeah. terms of just uh, mine's actually you, you will not know them. Oh, great! It's the only one that you will not recognize by name. Then I won't um, give my opinion on them. <laughs> that's fair. Will that help? Uh, that will help. Um, my ten is a band called Gold Spot. Oh my god, they fucking suck. <laughs> 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 They're the only like indie alt band I included. Because what are they? Gold a, what? Gold spot. Gold spot. One word. Um, I I gener- I really really appreciate their music. Um, it, it's a band I discovered via How I Met Your Mother, the TV show. I, I always really appreciated that soundtrack. Yeah. And when I was fifteen, I was like, it's it, Gold Spot makes music that's like. I'm going to run through the airport and confess my love to somebody. At the uh, end of this thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's the kind of shit. And I love that kind of music. Yeah. Like, it's been the music, you know how I've been working on the, the, sh- the short film script and stuff. Yeah. Walking around the neighborhood. I'm listening to that. Like it's kind of, it's kind of creatively fueling a little bit. And I like yeah. that. Um, they've got a few good songs. Like, uh, if the Hudson overflows is probably my favorite song. Oh, wait, spot. I probably played that for you. Actually, um, I've, I've, I, that's on a playlist of mine. Yeah, uh, that's a fucking great song. That band. So that's who that is. Fucking rocks. Uh, yeah, they've got maybe three, I should got three albums. One from two thousand four, two thousand nine, and two thousand fourteen. When was the Hudson song? Twenty fourteen. It's their newest one. Um, okay. Yeah, I love that song. That's a um, fucking great song. Yeah, that's that's a fucking uh, fantastic song. So old. Um, gold spot, and they've got they've got a lot of good songs like that. One of my new favorite songs of theirs that I discovered. 
in kind of trying to decide what my 10 were. Yeah. I was like, I know I like a few of their songs. Let's see. And I ended up loving all three of their fucking albums. Um, it was a song called Emily. Oh, how which was cool perfect. Yeah. yeah. I know. I loved it. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's a really sweet song. So I'm, I, I love them. Uh, great band, very soft, nothing, nothing groundbreaking by any means, but it's, it's, it's good music. I love it a lot. So 10 gold spot. I dig it. Yeah. I, you know, what's interesting is once upon a time I was a Spotify guy mm -hmm. and that's a song that came I, to you. I had found, years ago Yeah, that I just added to my Apple. Yeah. So I, I had song. it on a playlist long the ago. The guitar and the way that it, the music switches. It's a great, and, it's a yeah. great fucking song. Yeah, I love that song. If the Hudson Overflows by Gold Spot. But yeah. All Nine. right, I'm going to take you back um, to fourth grade. Fourth grade. What a time. Man. Mrs. Shunk. I'm fucking running around. It's my fourth grade. I miss Mrs. Lotman. Mm. She has nothing to do with this memory, though. That's good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Running around recess. Fucking swinging on the swings, you know. Yeah, good times. Maybe playing kickball. Maybe dodgeball. Love a good kickball. Bon Jovi yeah. in fourth grade yeah. was fucking crazy. Uh, everywhere. We're halfway there. Oh, living on a prayer. Um, shot through the heart, Whew. and you're to blame, darling. You, you give, give love a bad name. Bad name. Yeah, that's good yeah. Shit. It, it was. Fu it was. Yeah. Amazing. It was, what a time to fucking be alive. Bon Jovi. The 80s. So I'm going to say that was probably 87. Um, slippery when wet. So um, that. But what's funny, dude, is like after that, I never listened to any of fucking Bon Jovi. Shit. Right. Right. And so what you also need to understand and all you young people out there is some of the shit on my list. We did not have access. It wasn't readily available, right? Mm -hmm. You couldn't fucking get on your phone. You, you relied on FM fucking radio. Right, That was right. it. And so Bon Jovi was huge because it was, you know, it blew up and it was on FM radio. Right? Yeah. And so it might, Bon Jovi might not be like my favorite now, because, in fact, I did not listen to any of Bon Jovi's shit after that. Yeah, right, right. But, but they're nostalgically... It was fucking crazy. If I were to compare I that it. to something from my... What I think of when I think fourth grade, what yeah. music I liked in fourth Go. grade, Black Eyed Peas. Um, yes. That that would be it, you know, like uh, yeah, well, that's just that's Fergie. Is that that's is that just her? Fergie. Um, yeah, but uh, it's not Will know, I, Boom Boom Pow. Boom. Yeah, Will I Am, right? My style. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's that. But uh, yeah, like Black Eyed Peas. Like I, I obviously do not like the Black Eyed Peas now. They should have let Fergie in anyway. <laughs> I haven't listened to them in forever. They should have kicked her out after um, that fucking yeah, yeah, that yeah, fucking yeah. national <laughs> anthem, bro. <laughs> Have you ever seen the Golden, the State, Golden Warriors, State Warriors uh, remix yeah. of that? Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's incredible. But uh, uh, yeah, no. So th that would be my comparison for you. Is like when I think of fourth grade bands that I remember being like, "Damn, this goes up," yeah. but I haven't listened to really since Black Eyed Peas. Yeah, that's where I am. Um, and I, I dig they're, it. They're fucking it. number nine for me. Yeah, I love it. This is how bad my list is. Yeah, my list. Uh, it's full of a lot of artists. I actually, I obviously love a lot more <laughs> than you do. Because um, I'm, I'd be, I'd be surprised if my nine's not on your list. Um, now you don't have to give away any spoilers or anything, but my nine is the Highwaymen. Um, okay. Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, Chris Christopherson, Waylon Jennings. Um, I fucking love the Highwaymen. Yeah. Uh, oh, and I, I, I'm I'm so mad. That's actually one of the bands that or groups or whatever that I never even knew was a fucking thing. Holy shit! Because I didn't. Yeah. I, and I love Johnny shit. Cash. And I love Willie Nelson. Yeah. I love all those motherfuckers. I like discover this and I, another band that I do not have and it should speak volumes that I do not have is the traveling Wilburys, but like discovering that they exist yeah. blew my fucking mind. I was like, there's a band with Bob Dylan, George Harrison and yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, holy shit. They, they're in a band. Roy together? Orbison. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, uh, Tom Petty. I'm like, what the fuck? But highwaymen was that on a whole other level because they're yeah. all country music fucking legends, yeah. you know? Um, 
So, and, you know, the song Highwayman, yeah. obviously a uh, big one. American Remains has been just, like, on repeat for me lately. Yeah, you've been singing that just randomly yes, all over the place. Yeah, yeah I, I love that song. Um, and th- Well, I'm glad because I think you got onto them because I shared the Highwayman. song Highwayman. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Uh, I, I have you to credit for this. And I um, honestly, I don't. I don't know. I don't recall how I discovered it, but I sent it to you like around the time I figured you discovered out. it. Yeah, yeah. No, that was I, this year. Uh, it's it's been a little bit. Has it yeah. over? I, a year? I would I would guess within the last two years. Okay, um, all right. But uh, yeah, no, it's an incredible. They're an incredible band with incredible artists that like just superpowers of country music. Yeah. That if you're if you have any bone in your body that can be tickled by country music. It's going to do it for you. Um, so yeah, I love. And, I loved and it. they were. Um, I haven't done them enough justice in listening to their larger of catalog. Their, yeah, yeah. They were one that did not make it simply because I love you only a few know of their song. songs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I was like, well, I can't put them on there, even though I fuck, I, I'm sure I would enjoy all their sword shit. and pistol at my side. Oh, I fucking love Willie Nelson, man. Many a young girl lost her baubles to my tree. <laughs> yeah, fucking. My Many favorite verse in that song is Waylon Jennings. On my blade. Whenever he comes in and he's like, I fly a starship across, across the, the universe, universe divide. divide. Like, what the fuck do you mean by that? And when I reach the, the other, other side. side. Sometimes. Um, I'll find a blaze to rest my That's spirit not Johnny Cash. No, oh, Johnny Cash is the damn builder. Johnny Cash is the damn builder. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough to tell them apart sometimes. Uh, yeah, a lot um, of times it is. Yeah. Um, um, like, in American Remains, I have to, like, the only one who's, like, obviously. Are you sure? I'm going to challenge that really quick. Really? Are you positive? I'm I think almost Johnny Cash sure. is the last verse, and I think Waylon Jennings is the is damn the, builder. I was a damn builder. Maybe I was. Ma- yeah, Cross maybe I've been operating under the wrong assumption. Um, when steel and water did collide. Well, we're gonna find out we're right gonna here. Fucking find out right now. Yeah, let me look. And this I'm up. okay with being wrong. Yeah, so am I. You know, I'd, I'd, I would I'm like to learn. Really, really good at it. Verse one is obviously Willie Nelson. Okay. Uh, I'm wrong. You got my ass. No, okay. you're right. You're right. So Johnny Cash. Ch- yeah. So Johnny Cash is flying the fucking starship. That's even cooler, frankly. Dude, um, I know. Yeah. They've got, really, they've got really really similar voices you because I was so do. convinced the damn builder was Johnny Cash. It's Waylon. Yeah. Well, and that's why I thought the last verse was Waylon Jennings. <laughs> it's because I was so certain the damn builder was Johnny Cash. <laughs> All right, everybody, if you were listening to this, you have to listen to the Highwayman. And the song is Highwayman. Hi- Highwayman. Yeah. yeah. No, that's it's so it's fucking incredible. good. A great song. Um yeah. God, they should be on here, but they're not. Okay, understand. So that actually leads me to eight because you're talking about country. Mm. Um, this is, I think, my only country on here. But Highwaymen is also my only country. Is it all right? And, and I fucks with country. I do too. Um, Alabama. I've, gr- I've grown to a pre- ooh Alabama, Alabama, Alabama. Good choice. Uh, just so many great, great songs. One of the biggest reasons I think I'm. Alabama jumps out is because at there's a group of us that like at our weddings we would sing Dixieland Delight. Um, we would just literally grab the mic and sing it. Right. So there's so many great memories of singing that song. Uh, but there, I mean, there's so many other good ones. Mountain music. Uh, if you're gonna play in Texas, you gotta have a fiddle in the band. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, yeah, Alabama. Well, in country music, there's a certain accessibility. Um, yeah. And uh, there's this really, really interesting divide that people talk about um, that it's funny to notice once you notice it. Pre-9-11 and post-9-11 country music are, like, very different things. Uh, obviously, there's uh, there's obviously a certain degree of it that maintains. It's, it, the, the very core of it hasn't shifted a lot. But the patriotism aspect of country music really kicked up a notch. As far as what popular country music was after night. R.I.P. Toby Keith, that motherfucker ran with that shit. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> um, he ran with yeah, that. That like that's uh, that, one of the like uh, just a lot of those guys. Yeah. Post nine eleven, the most famous country music was. This America. is America. Yeah. You know, like uh, and and that that's one of the things that I always really pre- like about American Remains. Like I was just talking about. Yeah. That's pretty fucking critical of America. Yeah. You know, like that's that is the essence of that song. Like well, Chris some Christopherson's of the greatest, verse, some of the greatest songs ever. Oh I yeah, mean, I mean, um, "Born in the USA" by Bruce mm-hmm. Springsteen. 
people play that at when like, I was fucking, fucking Fourth of July. Yeah, when I was seven, I thought it was just the chorus was, "Hey, yeah, we're born in the U.S. Listen to that fucking yeah. song. It's an anti-war song. It is. Yeah, it's an awesome fucking it's a great song. fucking song. Yeah." Yeah, no, so like that that that's what I think the and the genre hasn't lost that by any stretch of, of the imagination. I'm I'm not familiar enough to really speak to it beyond that, but like what what sticks out as the most popular country music shifted at around that time. Yeah. Um which is really really interesting. But uh Yeah, yeah like I uh, agree with that. And and there there's And a, now I mean as as we've gone on though, the the lines have blurred a little bit. Like I I I like Morgan Wallen, mm. like in guys like that um Zach Bryan and Zach Bryan, yeah, it's not as con- like I look at you know, I I, I don't know every day, every day, yeah, I, every day, I go day, back bam. to uh, George Strait mm-hmm. and Garth Brooks. And I'm gonna like, jump in yeah, my truck and drink Michael, beer yeah, tonight. John Michael Montgomery. I yeah. mean, like those, and maybe it's that's becoming your, more pop. Maybe for that, sure. yeah, it has. Maybe that was just more like the '90s, but it's um, Florida Georgia that, Lines impact, baby. That's right. Uh, and the Zach Brown band, they might be they might be the most responsible for the shift in the tone of country, like mainstream country, than any other group there is. Zach Brown band and Florida Georgia Line, a little bit um, of chicken fry, a little bit of chicken fry. It's a fucking great song. Cold though. beer on a Friday night, you know, like that's that's just like a pair, yeah, pair of jeans fit just, just right in the radio up, radio you know, up. Like, fuck yeah, you know, sure. Um, um, well, what's interesting? Go, sorry, I'm all over the place. No, it's okay. Thinking of like country. I know that Willie Waylon, mm-hmm. Chris Christopherson, I, Johnny Cash. I know that they are, you know, considered that genre. But I don't know. I think I folk. When I sent you that song, I remember saying like, "These are fucking OGs, though." Yeah, like they're they're like renegades. They're they're outlaws. Well, and like, that's, and that's well, like there's I, a whole subgenre. I think that's why I love country. that shit is because. That's the parallel for me on like rap mm-hmm. and guys like that. Yeah, is yes. they're saying the same type of shit, mm-hmm. you know. Um, well, and that's what's cool. But there's a whole subgenre of country called outlaw country. Yeah, which is the best fucking genre of country there is. For sure. By the way, uh, I, I've been really big on Chris Christopherson in the week since his death. Yeah. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Chris Christopherson. Holy fucking shit! Did that guy have some music? Yeah. Oh my. Really God. good, man. Yeah. Like and so. What's good. interesting is like I always just thought he was an actor. Yeah, me too. Like when I was young, it was yeah, just like uh, whenever I because my mom loved mm-hmm. him in in the movies or whatever. Was and, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because uh, one of the most recent places that like we did the comic book movie journey through film at the beginning of last year and through twenty twenty three and into this year, um, for the for the podcaster. Yeah, yeah. Um, Blade. He's in the Blade movies. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's he's Blade's sidekick, uh, Whistler. It's Chris Christopherson. Uh, and I remember being no like, I remember like hearing his name and I'm like, Chris Christopherson, isn't that a, he's like really famous for like other things, isn't he? And I looked into him and he's a fucking legend I mean, in about, country music. Yeah, and fucking, I'm like, what a talented shit. dude. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, yeah and he, he's, he's damn good in those movies. But, uh, yeah, I no, mean, Willie Nelson is basically Snoop Dogg. Willie Nelson fucking rocks. Yeah. I love Willie Nelson. Yeah. I mean, he is, um. Uh, yeah, I love everything the dude's. He's also for. done a few few roles as well. He has, and uh, yeah. he's actually he's not a bad actor. He's in a movie called Thief with James Caan, um, directed by the same guy who did Heat and uh, okay and, and that that sort of stuff. Um, really good movie, strongly recommend. Got um, it. but uh, yeah, no. So Alabama, Alabama at eight. All right, Alabama, taking them above Bon Jovi. I respect it. I respect it. My eight is Pink Floyd. Okay. Um, I like me some Pink Floyd. And this is one that I actually, I, I, this is one of those ones that I discovered around that time where I was like, what are some bands that I'm supposed to like? Yeah. You know? And I'm like, let's look into Pink Floyd when I was like 17 I, or 18. All right. Um, Tell me Pink Floyd's uh, most popular song. Um, I couldn't, uh, popular is there, song. Is there one, I know like, the album cover that you will think of is oh, the rainbow with rainbow the prism the, and the, yeah, yeah. this dark side of the moon. Um, oh, Okay. And that's a pretty popular song. Is, are they the ones that sang "Money"? It starts with like a cash register. I do not know. I bet um, they were. "Wish You Were Here" and "Comfortably Numb" are a couple of their biggest songs. I'm like, "Comfortably Numb" is the one that I kind of think of as their as their big one. Okay. Um, I have because this is so so stupid. That, like, no- yeah, they did sing "Money." Um, okay, that's th- that's the, on the dark side of the moon. That's by the, way. the only Pink Floyd song I know, mm-hmm. and it's a badass song. No, it's great. 
Yeah, w- wish you were here is an album that I really like, but it's it's one of those it's five songs in forty four minutes. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> so it's like it's hard for me. And that's what's cool about their music, though, that I really really appreciate. Um, when it comes to, and an album doesn't have to have this to be good, but I I always look at it as a plus. If I'm supposed to listen to it front to back, I like that. I can't just click shuffle. And feel like it's good, like or like in the right order. Like yeah. I can tell it's you out gotta of place. Skip. Yeah, you know, like I like if I can listen from one track to the next, to the next, to the next, in the order they put it, and it feels like, whoa, I didn't really realize we were in a new song, even though this feels completely yeah, different. Like yeah, it naturally flowed, flowed, flowed right into this through. next yeah. thing, you know. Like and Pink Floyd does that with every single one of their albums. Oh, okay. Like that's that's kind of their bag. Um, and Wish You Were Here is a really really great album, and then The Wall is probably my favorite pink floyd album okay that's a, that's actually a ridiculously long one though it's 26 songs um in an hour and 20 minutes so it's a little bit of a little bit of a long listen but uh that that's the one with another brick in the wall um parts one through three um got it they got it spread out across the, the thing those they're all really good um pink floyd i'm impressed pink floyd yeah pink floyd rocks um so i don't know that i did i list them as one that wasn't even on my no you did not okay didn't come up which i was thankful for i, I like whenever the, they happen to slip through the cracks and i'm like right. <laughs> i have that got one it. you know got um, it but uh, yeah pink floyd at eight for me seven seven <laughs> okay okay so let me <clears throat> when i was about sixth seventh grade mm-hmm. this is not this is not the group by the way but there was a group called new kids on the block that came oh, out of course okay now i know where we're heading <laughs> and so the and maybe it was band. sixth or seventh grade the yeah boy they, band were, they were the first born they were the first yeah they were the first boy band and it was like when they first came out they were you know not a lot's changed in that regard where like they will we will we will end you as quickly as we will build, oh, yeah. build you up, right? Mm-hmm. Like, not a lot's changed there because they were huge. Right. My best friend um, at the time and for a long time, Justin Williams, he got tickets to see New Kids on the Block. Right. By the time the fucking concert came, he was ashamed to go. Yeah. Because it was like... You Not can't of the be corny, a, yeah. Yeah, you can't, you can't be a, you know, a young guy Dude. and like yeah. fucking go. It's going to be... No, yeah. Having said all that, I'm 20 years old. I'm far more secure in who I am as a, of as a course, man. Naturally. And I realize, wait, who are these guys? Who are these, who are these fucking guys? Who's the dude with the, with the tight macaroni curls? Who's, who's the dude with the tight curls? <laughs> who's that boy? Oh, it's Justin. Justin My name's Justin. Timberlake? I fuck with NSYNC. NSYNC's good. And I'm not ashamed. Mm -mm. And at that time, I would fucking celebrate the hell out of it. Like, I was that, like, young, like, fuck yeah. Like, let's go. Bye, 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 baby. I'll do the whole fucking dance. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah, that's the good shit. And, I mean, I was was so in sync that fuck Backstreet Boy. I don't. I'm a, I'm anti Backstreet yeah. Boys. Fuck those boys. <laughs> Fuck those boys. They don't know what's on this Fuck side of the street. Fuck those Backstreet Boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it, it just reminds me of a certain time. It was you know around the time that you were, uh, you know, a twinkle in your mom's eyes. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I mean, I remember being in the apartment that Jeremy and I shared and. Yeah, we like in sync. In sync, and they were huge. I mean, that reminds me too of uh, oh, there was a show that Carson Daly uh, hosted every day on on mm-hmm. uh, MTV. Yeah, um, can't even remember what it was called, but it, yeah, uh, it, is that uh, Total Request? Total Request Live, maybe TRL? TRL? Yeah, yeah. Like that's what it was. I mean, that's how Carson Daly blew the fuck mm-hmm. up. And I don't know if he's what he's doing these days. Probably doing. Uh, yeah, he's around. New Year's Eve, uh, yeah, shows. shit like that. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of his bag. He's like, he's like not Ryan Seacrest, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like that guy. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I just and I, it was what's interesting about NSYNC is like you knew who the fucking star was, mm-hmm. and he went on to be JT. He yeah. went on to be a star, mm-hmm. and I was a big. I went on. To be I, I love Justin Timberlake for a very like, long time. And he, yeah. he, I know it's funny because he's, 
He's a little out like, there again, now. If you if somebody's around long enough, yeah. you're gonna find out like nah, uh, you this kinda, guy's kind of a fucking dick. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. you you make enough money and you you know you're you're famous for long enough, it warps your perspective a bit. You yeah, know? like uh, and I mean, happen. for the longest time, he was pretty well accepted mm-hmm. in like the R and B community. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and and so I don't feel bad that I'm the only one that maybe got fooled on that. No, right, right. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it, but uh, f- super talented. Like, it, woman that can take you, I mean, that with him and Tim, uh, Timberlake, and he did. He Timberland. Did, uh, Timberland, yeah. yeah. Timberland and uh, Neptunes. Yeah, yeah. Oof, like, yeah. he did He did some. He did some good stuff. Good shit solo. Yeah. But, but. I mean, the stuff he did with Jay-Z and the 2020 experience around 2012. Oh, yeah. you know, like, that's good yeah. stuff. That's good stuff. Yeah. And, and. I so he was probably the most the, the biggest reason I enjoyed in sync, mm-hmm. but so, so but I we're on seven yeah and I fucking so twelve year old me would be fucking just cringing that I'm over here saying my seventh favorite is in sync fucking in sync dude <laughs> no I mean like but that's that's the thing that's why this project's fun that's why that's why episodes like this are fun because like one one band that I I just couldn't include um. That if I had treated it the way you had, and I hadn't looked into anybody else, and yeah. I had just kind of been like, "Well, at this time, I've lived my, my life. life. This is what I got. This yeah. is what I liked." A band that probably would have made it in the same vein is One Direction. I really liked One Direction. Yeah, you remember? Yeah. I, I enjoyed One I, Direction. I do. Yeah, you know. Um, and I've never been anti boy band. I always thought they were kind of corny and stuff, but like, uh, they made good fucking music. You know, who was I to say that I didn't like it? You know, I loved Big Time Rush and stuff, yeah. like the Nickelodeon show and everything. So like, uh. But no, One Direction. I always, I was really, I always really appreciated them. And I remember because obviously I knew Justin Timberlake before I knew NSYNC. And I remember when right. you were, I remember whenever I learned that Bye 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 existed, and I listened oh. to that song. I was like, this song rocks. And you were like, you know who sings it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know who that is? Yeah, right? It's Justin Timberlake. That's and I was JT, like, baby, what? You know, bye, it's a, bye, w- bye. world opens. Um, but uh, oh, I love it. Yeah, no, because I mean, I've I was always a really big Justin Timberlake fan when I was younger. Uh, I mean, Cry Me a River is a fucking Cry Me a River is a great song. Yeah. Um, the uh, 2020 experience was like uh, with uh, Mirrors. It's like you're my mirror. Mm-hmm. That's a good yeah. fucking song. No matter how you feel about Justin Timberlake now, For it's sure. a good fucking song. For sure. Suit and tie with Jay Z. That was a good one. Suit and tie. Um, yeah. Oh, there's one that's. Uh, I think m- there may have been one Christmas that you got me a Justin Timberlake CD. It was probably the 2020 experience too, yeah. um, if I recall correctly. But uh, yeah, now I got to find that song. Oh, what was it? Because now I'm gonna want to fuck. I mean, losing my way. That's one that I always really. Oh, liked losing when I was my younger. way is such um, a fucking. Great but I was thinking song, more dude. contemporarily is what I was looking for. My love. Oh, my, my love. My, my love. love. The Ti's on that shit. That is my mind. Let's see. Oh, until the end of time. With no, Beyonce? it's more. It's 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 it. What goes around comes around. That's a good one too, but not quite that. It's more recent than that. Oh, but um, dude, can you fuck with sexy back? Sexy back. Bring in sexy. I'm bringing back. sexy back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, them other man. boys don't know how to act. Yeah. What the fuck, man? He was in Holy Grail too. I forget about. Um, oh, yeah. are you talking future sex love sounds? No, it's post that. Oh. It's after. Like it's it's 2020 experience era, and I'm pissed that I cannot find it. What is that song called? Because I don't think it's on the album, which is pissing me off even more. Uh, it's fine. I'm just gonna let it. I'm just gonna let it go. I'm just gonna let it go. Are you, you're going to? I think so. Drink you away. Fuck that was quitter. what I was looking for. Um, you found it. Yeah. And I can't drink you away. Oh yeah. Is that with a? Uh, drink you away. He did the song with Chris Stapleton. Uh, that is not that one, but no? uh, okay. he did do a song with Chris Stapleton. I don't remember what that is, but uh, yeah, that was the one I was looking for. So I'm good. I'm done. I'm done. We're looking good. Just We're over that. Um, but yeah, in sync. That's a good choice. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's a choice. It reminds me of my one my one <laughs> D phase. Um, I did enjoy One Direction uh, quite a bit. But uh, all right, my seven. Seven go. My seven is ah okay. This is the one that I discovered this week. That I was like, okay. not discovered this week. I obviously have always heard of them, but it was one that I'd never given the time of day beyond one song that we all know. 
Um, I'm a creep. Radiohead. Radiohead, man. Uh, I fucking love Radiohead. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. I'm, I didn't realize I love Radiohead until this week. Uh, I listened to, I, I was like, I'm going to give the album with Creep on it a chance. It's called Pablo Honey. I listened okay. to that front to back. I was like, I like this a lot. I listened to OK Computer, which I've heard is a really, really great album. I fucking loved it. And then okay. I listened to their most divisive album, In Rainbows. Divisive how? Um, you either fucking not love Radiohead it. then? It's 2007. Yeah, it's 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 late aughts Radiohead. It's not 90s Radiohead when they, yeah. they you know, it's it's Tom York getting a little fucking weird. Yeah, doing um, little, doing something different. It's my favorite Radiohead album. Um, I okay. fucking love it. So I was like, and if that was the case for me, where every single one I listened to was better than the next, yeah, yeah, I was like, this is this is one of my favorite bands of all time, kind of instantly. Uh, and all of them are s- sonically a little different. They're so unique. were they um, mid to late nineties? I'm assuming, like when yes. when like creep, um, because I there was a time that I lived through that you did not, of course. You weren't alive. Several of those years. Yeah. Old ass. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. Sorry. 93 is when Creep was. Oh, God. Yeah. Damn. Um, that there was an entire wave of a different type of music, and it's, you know, like, I don't know, called grunge or whatever the fuck mm-hmm. you want. Alternative. A lot of people call it alternative. Like Nirvana. Pearl yeah, Jam. yeah. Oh, God. You forgot about Nirvana? I fucked up. I did not include Nirvana. That's my bad. You forgot about Nirvana? I forgot Nirvana. Yeah, did, they did would absolutely really? have been 10. Yeah, or in my top 10. Yeah. Jesus. I, I see, went way over my fucking head. My bad. Per, see? Pearl Jam's another good one. Pearl Jam's solid. Uh, Nirvana would have been in my top 10. Nirvana for a group of my friends. Mm-hmm. Like, it's interesting, like, as you're growing up and you hit a certain point, like a certain age... You know, you're going through puberty. You're, I you're, can't believe I fucked you're beca- that. Sorry. <laughs> you're becoming an adult or whatever, a young adult, mm-hmm. and people have different interests. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? And there were several of my friends that just loved alternative. Kurt or Cobain? Grunge. Yeah, fucking Kurt Cobain, man. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry. Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. Um, so, yeah, Nirvana, uh, like that. That's around that. Yes, that era. I, I put that in that 100%. Lane, like, um, with Radiohead. It, it's definitely that era. And they were even, a, I would argue, a little more experimental than than the grunge sound. Yeah. Because Pablo Honey, I would say, that album with Creep and stuff does well, first fit of that all, bill. I fucking love the name of that album. Pablo Honey? Yeah. Yeah, it's I never incredible. knew that was a... Yeah. I, I have that, no That's idea actually why. the only song I, I, I think I... There might be ones that I've heard that... If I heard him, I you heard him. You but, know them, but, but yeah, creep is um, like that's yeah, creep, a fucking great song. That tr- have you seen the video of the guy talking to uh, the guy on the radio show talking about how creep for white people is like just yes, yeah, like <laughs> and, and, and all of them become a different person when they listen to creep by radio. Yeah. <laughs> we all realize what we are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, no, yeah, that's definitely their biggest song by uh, like. No holds barred. That's, so, man, look, I'm really sorry I brought up Nirvana, right? Yeah, that like sucks. That. that sucks. Just know that I didn't save the day because they're not on my fucking list. Fuck, yeah. They're I not know. on my top ten. Um, then, yeah, I mean, it would it would have been R.I.P. Gold Spot at the very least, but uh, Nirvana would would have been in my top ten. I think I was so focused on kind of, I don't know what I was focused on. Yeah, what the fuck were you Nirvana. doing? I can't believe um, Nirvana didn't come up in like an, any list. It didn't list even search. come up in my honorable mentions, which is insane. I didn't even take it down. I didn't even think of Nirvana. Well, um, and and the the drummer Dave Grohl, I think mm-hmm. is his name. Yeah, he went on to have a band that's super fucking popular. Yes. you need to help me with that. Yes, I do. Who is that? The Foo Fighters. The Foo Fighters. That's uh, right. The Foo Fighters. Yeah, Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken. <laughs> the Foo Fighters. <laughs> um, no, I, uh, I I'm not I'm not a big Foo Fighters guy, but. Uh, I, I've, I've always really appreciated Nirvana, which is why I'm fucking kicking yeah, myself. Yeah, you got to be really That's one right that I've, now. like, always appreciated. Not like... Damn. Not we're, okay, like, so if we, like, not to get off the rails, where would they it land? Been, they would Where more, would it land, though, ish? Who the fuck are you... Uh, so are you saying it's 10? They're 10? No, 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 Oh, no. so this impacts... This, this fucks up my list. Like, so they're Nirvana, top, are they top five? They probably... Uh, they would probably be... You know what? They would be comfortably above the four I've said. Oh man! Um, my you next, can't do it my now. next one would be the one that I'd be like, I can't put them over. This I can't. One. I maybe not. You know. Okay. But uh, yeah. So all that to say, Nirvana would have been seven. Okay. Radiohead would have been eight. Right. Yeah. It would have. It would have been. Uh, it would have been. Everyone would have been bumped down one. Pink Floyd would have been nine. Highwaymen would have been ten. And Gold Spot wouldn't have been on the list. Damn. Um, Gold Spot. Sorry, Gold Spot. But like when I look at Nirvana, like that, I. 
there were a bunch of iconic bands I had down here where I'm like, ah, I feel comfortable putting Goldspot in over them. Nirvana would not, not have done that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I would have looked at Nirvana and gone, well, sorry, I can't include you here. You know, that's um, so funny. You have to be looking at my list as a, as it's just, you, you must be just like, you, your list fucking sucks. No, not at I all. I didn't even consider Nirvana. I didn't. I, I, mean, and I recognize they're great. They're, oh, I incredible. Was, I'm going with favorite. Mm-hmm. Like how my feels, man. No, I, and that's, that's the point. And Nirvana, like, that, that they, the they point. can fucking go and all that, but like, especially at that point in my life, it was fucking Something gangster. Something in the way. <laughs> It was fucking gangster rap all day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was That's it was Doctor Dre, it was Tupac, it yeah. was yeah, no, it was N.W.A. I, yeah, I fucked up here, but uh, um, no. yeah, because I mean, I, I'd be I'm going off of this was your idea. I know. God. I brutalized this. Failed. I <laughs> fucked it up. Uh, no, but uh, <laughs> yeah. No. What uh, what's what's your six then? So let's take a look. So number six. What do you got? Yeah, number six. So. This is one that I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks about. They have some really As good opposed to InSync. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> fuck you. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks about any of my list. There's no such thing. I'm as not guilty. sure what to think of my list. I I am opposed to the idea of a guilty pleasure. There should not be guilty pleasure. I mean, some of them should be, but not, not, I mean, not music or movies. You can like anything and it's okay. You know, it's a lot easier to not care about what people think of you when you realize how seldom they do. Mm, deep. Fucking spitting. Bars. Bars. Um, Coldplay. Ooh, yeah. Good choice. Just so many great songs. Um, it was all yellow. Swallowed by the sea. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Viva La Vida. Just, yeah. Just uh, uh, Fix You. Mm. Ooh, Fix Actually, You. Actually, I think it was Swallowed in the Sea. So sorry about that. Swallowed in the Sea. Uh, fix You. Uh, there's so many great fucking Coldplay songs. Mm. And I think that's probably in the 2000s. So it's not even For like sure. maybe, you know... I mean, they still make music. They They're do, still, I know, but I don't yeah. listen to much of it. Like it, it was a specific period for me with the Coldplay. Mm-hmm. Um, probably before, like, you know, people started getting sick of Coldplay. Right. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I, but maybe they were already sick of them. But um, yeah, Coldplay. I, I started with them like at ten. Mm-hmm. Everybody just slowly worked their way up, like, and I yeah. started with ones on this list that aren't on it now and yeah. i'm like fucking coldplay though man i, I mean like coldplay yeah. i do Coldplay makes some good tunes um and my big thing was like well at least i don't have nickelback on here <laughs> 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 poor nickelback uh, nickelback sucks um, you know there is one guilty pleasure it's nickelback <laughs> <laughs> yeah that might be I mean, my biggest guilty p- pleasure is uh, Taylor Swift's Wildest Dreams. If Wildest Dreams like, goes up. If we had, if we did a top five Wildest Pleasure songs. I'm not legally allowed to say that Taylor Swift is a g- guilty pleasure. Well, right. But but I'm, for me. No, yeah, of course. Of I know, course. I know you, uh, you're not allowed uh, based on marriage. Penalty of death. That's right. Um, <laughs> but, but for me... Um, yeah, that would be my number That's one guilty there. pleasure song. But there. fix you, swallowed in the sea, to oak till kingdom come, swallowed in the sea. Well, and they had one within the last ten years. Gosh, I hope it's been within the last ten years now. Um, where they featured on a chain smokers song. Remember the chain smokers? Uh, yes. I want something just like this. That's yes. Coldplay. Um, um, I'm forgot, pretty sure that's a chain smokers. You're right. It is because. Chainsmokers had some fucking bangers in the 2014 era. Like yeah, this. yeah. Do-do. They had the roses Do-do. and. Uh, um, oh. You know what? And that leads me to number five, Chainsmokers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a duo. You can't fucking do that. Fuck! I didn't know that. You can't fucking do that. <laughs> Bro, fuck rules. Uh, no, but Coldplay is a good choice. Uh, I, I was always a big fan of Coldplay when I was younger. I, the the album cover that I always think of is X and Y. This one. Yes. Um, I, I remember That's, coming to that. that so a lot. that. That album is the one where I was like, "Yeah, I fucking really." Yeah, like they're this. good, man. They're good. Um, yeah, and then "Viva La Vida" or "Death" and all his friends. I remember. I remember being younger. Um, I like 
Caden Smith Peters house and yeah. looking through like album covers. We love looking through album covers. Fuck we're yeah. like, yeah, let's, 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 I like that one. Yeah. Viva La Vida was one of those. It was one of the uh, ones yeah, you like this. Like, this Viva looks cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. I like Viva La Vida. Um, but, uh, yeah. I so, mean, the guy uh, was married to Gwyneth Paltrow. He, I mean, he's got to be legit. It's got to be cool. Got to be cool yeah. in some capacity. Um, or not. Or maybe not based yeah, on. Yeah, one, uh, one or the other. Either very cool or very based not Based on a cool. tweet to Jay-Z um, and Kanye West about people in Paris. Uh, true. Truth. I think that was just privilege. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think it yeah. was just ignorance yeah. and like, yeah, no, just oh, like, I, you don't know that you were saying something you should not be saying, which yeah. is wild. Yeah, right? it's bizarre. Um, like that's how that's how rich and white she is. Yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow is a different kind of disconnected from reality. Right. Like, oh, it's not okay to say the n word in Paris. Yeah. But I love that song. No. Yeah. Why can't I say it? You mean well, but you were you were doing stupid. it horribly. Stupid. I know. Uh, but God, uh, it's so fucking stupid. Yeah. But. Uh, Coldplay, all right. Yeah, Coldplay. All right. My Chris six. Martin. Is his uh, name Chris Martin? I think so. Here? It's Chris yeah. something. Might as well. Let's just yeah. call him Chris Martin. Yeah, fuck it. Mama named him Chris. I'm going to call him Chris. I'm going to call him Chris. Uh, he's Chris. But uh, my six is, uh, is probably much better than mine because you're fucking- I mean, I'd argue. Is... I don't have Coldplay in my top 10, so, you know, there's that. You know, personally, it's I, I prefer this band to Coldplay. Well, you don't have any of my fucking. Uh, so. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I will. We, we my number got five, the, though. You, we you ain't gonna fuck with my number five. No, I'm not. Okay, yeah. I'm my top five, five are fucking. I insane. defy anybody to fucking challenge my. <laughs> 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 my number six is Fleetwood Mac, uh, um, and you know they they were right there for me. Yeah. Um, if, if this was a retrospect. Mm-hmm. Then may then then very well they might right. be like looking um, back and if yes. if you dove into them a little bit yeah I mean fucking they've got Stevie some Nicks t- is a bad incre- she just bitch, performed man. in uh, on SNL the, last is, night um, she's a badass I, I fucking love Stevie Nicks um, but uh, you know the chain and dreams uh, the entire the entirety of that of that fucking album landslide landslide um, landslide but, dreams. Mm-hmm. Uh, Silver Springs, yeah, they've got they've got some fucking tunes everywhere, um, everywhere, everywhere. Um, go your own way. Go, yes, you got to go but ev- your everywhere. Own hit way. me because I knew that song existed, and then it was reborn through a fucking commercial. Mm. And whoever put that in that, it was a car commercial, I think, like two years ago, right? And genius, genius. I, I, well, I bet their I bet their numbers on that song went up. Oh, because it's a no great doubt. song, and they featured it on a commercial. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm with you. Yeah, Fleetwood Mac, the, the the self-titled that they have as well is a great song. Monday morning and warm ways. Uh, Rhiannon, Rhiannon's a really good song. I don't know off the um, top. I'm not sure. All I right. think you'd recognize it if you heard it. Um, yeah, no, but uh, they uh, one of the you know the chain is definitely one of those ones that I think of. You know. Uh, we will never break the chain. Mm. That's uh, I, we watched uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy movies together. Um, yeah, gar- that song is featured in the second movie at some point during like uh, one of the big battles, and I remember being like, "Oh, this is just a perfect fucking song." To yeah, this. it's hard. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I love me some Fleetwood Mac, so I had to I had to get them in here. Well, They're my I, six. If if I'm being honest, I mean like, landslide has to be. One of my favorite songs of all mm-hmm. time. Like They've that's got a several of what I would have to say is song. one of my favorite songs. I know. Ever. Her yeah. voice is just magic, She can though, fucking dude. sing, yeah. dude. And, I mean, I mean her solo she... stuff, Edge of 17, that's a really great song. Is she, is she 65, 70? Gotta be. Uh, 60s, probably. Stevie Nicks. Let's find out. I mean, like I said, she performed on SNL last night. Yeah. 76. She's fucking, she's my 76. mom's age. Yeah. That's crazy. That is wild. Her voice is fucking magic, though, dude. Great. I mean, great, great pick. Yeah, your list is better. <laughs> Until now. Until now. What's your five, baby? Let's get into the top five. Okay, so this would be easily R and B, but they were just so pop. Like, mm-hmm. you know, in the nineties, they were everywhere. They were on soundtracks. Yeah. Um. My mother son dance at my wedding, which you attended, by the way. I did. I was there. <laughs> you were asleep the whole fucking time. Yeah, I was there. Um, Mama. Boys to men. 
Boys to Men. Okay. Boys to Men. And if you're looking for that gut wrenching, just heartfelt, no matter what, like love, like mm-hmm. just yeah, Boys to Men. That they had a they owned like the the nineties mm-hmm. for that. Um End of the Road. I, have, I mean, are you familiar with? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, what I always loved was like the dude that had the bass voice that would just talk on shit. Yeah, he'd just be like, "Yeah, you don't want me no more, <laughs> baby. I love you." <laughs> it was like, his old job, dude. He's a bad dog behind him. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Like B- Boys to Men was just. I mean. Motown Philly, there was a whole vibe coming out that way, like um, Belle Bib DeVoe, mm-hmm. New Edition, yeah. which were on my list and like of like my big list. Yeah. Um, they're kind of from that whole Michael Bivens, who's Biv and, and Belle Bib DeVoe. Belle Bib DeVoe, yeah. Um, I think he put them on. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just exploded. And they were commercial. I mean, again, everything was everything was on the radio. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, and you know, if if um, I know they're obviously R and B and soul, mm-hmm. but they were so mainstream with the white audiences. Yeah, like, they became the, pop. Uh, yeah, I mean, but um, they, I mean, they were on Boomer, like the Boomerang movie with mm-hmm. Eddie Murphy. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, and actually, John funny enough, I mentioned it earlier. Mm-hmm. They were they were in an episode of How I Met Your Mother. Um, uh, they they do Legends. a song that. In one of the earlier episodes, one of the long-term storylines in that show is that Marshall and Barney make a slap bet, and the yeah. agreement they come to is that Marshall can slap him at any point throughout eternity for, like, ten times. He's got ten slaps coming in his Ten future, total. Uh, or five total okay. over the course of his life. You don't know when they're coming. He's going to give right. you one slap I'm at a time. I'm going to get you. Yeah. Um, and one of the last ones, he, he writes a song for one of them, and then... He performs it, but in the very end of the show, at the in the the last season, the last slap, Boys to Men performs the song. <laughs> it's fucking hysterical. It's ridiculous. It's <laughs> what are they? What do they perform though? Uh, they perform the song Marshall wrote for the slap. Oh my um, god, that's it's amazing. called "You Just Got Slapped." Yes, you just got slapped across the face, they- my friend. <laughs> It's fucking hilarious. Um, and they perform the shit out of it. Oh, they sure. perform the fucking shit out of it. And, like, it's it's a song they obviously should not be performing the shit out of, but it's hysterical that they are. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, and it's one of those... It, it, I don't I don't believe that was my introduction to Boys to Men by any, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but I remember being like, Boys to fucking Men, all yeah, right. Yeah, and what's fucking wild is, like, so... I don't know, man. It was... It was 90... You know, early 90s, mm-hmm. you know, I'm 14 through 16, whatever. Yeah. And like end of the road is like end somebody's road, obviously yeah. fucking dying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll make love to you. That yeah. was the name of the fucking song, man. Yeah. I mean, that's an iconic one. That's a fucking great song. Yes, it is. But you know, my 14 year old ass is like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The the one that's kind of like that for me is uh, the Usher song "Make Love in This Club." Oh boy, that was a pop song that I would hear on the inter- the, in on the radio club, singing along to, like seven years yes, old. Like, exactly. I want to make love in this I, club. I remember you doing it. Yeah. Like, oh man, boy wants to make love in the club. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fucking. If they're not censoring it on. On, on the radio, radio why, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. I, I, I just um, like the vibe, you know? I'm like, yeah, love sounds cool. Why not make it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, on Bended Knee was the one. A song for Mama, that was the one that uh, was my wedding dance with mm. my mom. Uh, Water Runs Dry. I mean, they were featured in fucking LL Cool J's Hey Love. Hey Love, mm-hmm. Hey Love. Boys Two Men, yeah. Um, I mean, they were fucking... Yeah, they were good. They were good. They were, they were good. good. Yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm scrolling through their their catalog here. Um but yeah, like to your point with the uh make love in this club, that was that was the equivalent. Yeah. Like yeah. I'll make love, love to you. you. Like, Motherfucker, you don't even know what making love like is. You want me to. Yeah. And yeah. I'll hold you tight. I don't think I've ever actually sought that song out. I just fucking know it. It yeah. might be another one on, of those. Yeah, it's in movies yeah. and it's like yeah. it's 
it's another one of those ones where I feel like you just kind of fucking know that that song is. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, that's a good one. So good. yeah, I feel I feel good about my top five and starting with them. I actually oh, yeah. going in, I thought I'd put them higher. Oh, that's encouraging. That makes me excited for your top five. Oh man, I hope I don't um, let everybody down. No, I mean it's up to you. That's the point. Of that's right. You know, fuck everybody. I don't fuck care what everybody. anybody thinks. That's right. Fuck, fuck you. Everybody. Fuck you too, Colton. Oh. I mean, I love you, but um, <clears throat> my, my five, uh, my five is go on talking heads. Oh, I love that pick for you. I love that pick for everyone. Yeah, I love talking heads. Um, okay, go. Yes, um, it's, it's your pick. It, this is a relatively recent discovery. Not uh, not like Radiohead. I listened last week for the first. Within the last couple of years, I've discovered Talking Heads because there was a movie coming out. It was the concert movie for their album "Stop Making Sense." It's a uh, their their live album, which is really really good. Yeah, um, David Byrne is a bizarre fucking creative who does a lot of wild shit with his with his work. So yeah, he's he's exciting, um, and it, it comes through and and talking like one of the songs that pretty much everyone knows. It feels like a psycho killer, psycho killer. Yeah, kiss kiss say. Yeah, fa 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 fa. Run, 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 run. <laughs> no, I mean, he. They have a lane. And oh he, yeah, he's a genius in terms of like he does his, some bizarre um, stuff with sound that you don't yeah, think should sound voice. good. And his voice is, is it's not is, it's not particularly like good. Good, good. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they say my voice isn't good. good. I don't know? sing. Well. I don't sing well. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, there's a lot of. There's a lot of artists that have gotten away. I mean, Bob Dylan, one of Bob my favorites Dylan. ever. Oh, I know. So not a very particularly yeah. good singer. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's my friend who's fucking yeah. But man, I love Talking Heads. Once in a lifetime, mm. we yeah. talked about landslide. I mean, once in a lifetime. I don't know, man. It's it's top. Fuck! Don't get me into top ten or it's not a top ten, but like it's one of it's one of my favorite songs. Mm. Burning down the house. Burning down the house. Great song. Um, Once in a lifetime. Yeah. No, they've just got so one. many great, great songs. And the the one that I always come back to is Psycho Killer, just because I don't know. There's something about it that just gets me jazzed the fuck up. Take me to the river is good. Take me to the river. Yes, yeah. that is. Uh, seen and not seen is one that I really, really like. Um, but yeah, they've, burning uh, down the house is good though. It yeah. reminds me. <laughs> so I mean. It had to have been. I was seven, six or seven, watching a, a, a movie I shouldn't have been watching. Right. Called Revenge of the Nerds. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And burning down the house is in that movie, mm. and they're, you know, they're singing it, and you know, so it's just it's funny how your mind takes you back. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, burning down the house will always be tied to Revenge of the Nerds. Revenge for of the me. Nerds. Yeah. 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 No, I, uh, I, I really, I really fuck with Talking Heads. It's definitely one of my favorite bands. I'm Top glad, five. Top I'm five. glad you picked them. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I did. It, that's another one that went to like uh, you know I only know a few of their songs mm-hmm. and yeah I can't you can't really I didn't say. celebrate like a lot but then again I'm over here talking about Coldplay like I didn't fucking so I'm just I'm just changing the rules as I go nah man that's that's the that's the fun of I'm a top controlling 10. the narrative Coldplay. yeah you are I'm in control yeah you are uh, four. 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 four four longevity four four, four. um catalog mm. you know um they they can thank one young lady for their resurgence in the 90s and her name's Alicia Silverstone mm. and it's Aerosmith yeah like they've been they've earlier. been fucking doing it for a yeah. long time and I love all their shit sweet yeah. emotions are you mm-hmm. fucking kidding like yeah but their entire renaissance in the mm-hmm. 90s, I mean, they'd already been around for 30 fucking years, 20, right. 20 plus years. And they, I mean, Aerosmith, bro. Steven Tyler. Steven Tyler. Yeah. Um, Living on the Edge. Like, there's so many. Now, I've got some great fucking songs. They do. This is another one of those ones where I remember... It, it, I like a, I know I like a few of their songs, but I've never dug into them on a more on a Sweet more intrinsic emo- level. Do you know Sweet Emotion? Yes, Sweet Dream On, Dream On, Dream Yeah, 
I mean, walk I this don't way. Don't wanna miss a thing. Oh, that's God. one that I. That's, that's, that's what that's I was looking for. Uh, Sweet that's that, emotion. That's that movie with ben Affleck where I actually did Armageddon. not know until just now that Sweet Emotion was Aerosmith. Really? Yeah. Till just now? Till just now. Fucking, that's outstanding. Dream On. Dream On. Dream On 73. Dream On. Dude, Sweet Emotion is 75. Damn. Walk This Way, yeah. They did Walk yeah. This Way. And what I love, too, is they, like, when they got with Run DMC and did Walk This Way. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they were like, okay. I mean, Crazy, Living on the Edge, and Crying. Are you familiar with all three of those songs? Uh, the, at least That's that crazy. Alicia Silverstone era, 93. Yeah. So so we're over here talking about 73 for Dream On, and then in 93, they give us, I mean, at least those three, and there were a lot more. Uh, walk this way. Angel, Ragdoll, living in the movies. Yeah. No, not quite. Right. Not that quite for it? me. Don't know what that is. You don't no. know Ragdoll? I don't know Ragdoll. Oh, you got to fucking find I'm, out. I'm going to fuck with Aerosmith after this. That's because... Permanent Vacation in 1987. Ragdoll. Um, did you know Janie's got a gun? Yeah, that's Aerosmith. That's Aerosmith. Yeah. Okay, apparently there's a few more Aerosmith songs that I know than I didn't. I actually know Janie's got a gun because of the spoof in... Uh... <laughs> Um, not another teen movie with Chris Evans. <laughs> okay. Whenever he's he's in the stands and he's he's spoofing Ten Things I Hate About You at the time with Heath Ledger, um, but the girl he's chasing after is a, is a chick named Janie, and he's he's in the stands and the song he sings to her is that and he goes Janie's got a gun and she like gets tackled by security everyone goes running and stuff and he's all the while he's singing Janie's got a gun and he's still singing the fucking song while she's getting it's taken a pretty away funny right fucking bit um, but yeah that's actually how I remember learning what that song is funny enough yeah it, um. Love in an elevator. You probably don't know. Love in I do an not. elevator. I do not. God, dude, you've heard these songs. You had to have. I'm so old. I'm so old. Um, Aerosmith. And Aerosmith. I'm, I'm fucking real happy with my Aerosmith pick. That's a that good. Floor. That's a good choice. That's actually one that I almost brought up earlier when I, I, was naming ones that didn't make my list. But it was one that I was like, I think my dad might have Aerosmith on his list, so I didn't say it, and I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I'm I held glad. back. Yeah, I um, appreciate that. But. uh and I don't know what gave me that feeling. I don't think I've ever heard you particularly speak too much about Aerosmith, but like because you weren't saying it, I was like, Aerosmith well, might be on his fucking list. This goes back to again, like you haven't, like I haven't celebrated this type of music with you at all. No, no, like, but, yeah, I, I credit I mean, you wholeheartedly with my love for rap. Yeah, but, no I mean, doubt. when you were over here, fucking wet a hood, wet a hood, wet a hood, at, when you were fucking yeah. three years yeah, that's old, all you. Yeah, that's all, yeah, that's all you. I hang my hat on that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, move bitch get Get out out the the way way. get out the way (laughs) yeah that's me um but uh my four is the only contemporary band i have on my list aside from gold spot which i don't know if you can even call contemporary since they haven't put out anything in 10 years and Um, they're already off of it because of of yeah now they're off of it because of nirvana um but you know what i'm gonna make that adjustment right now so i don't (laughs) forget it whenever i'm going running back through um, my four is Florence and the Machine. Ah, I like that. I, like I that love lot. Florence and the Machine. Yeah. And the only reason they're not higher is because I feel weird about putting them above the groups I have in my top three. Okay. You I know? mean, that's and, fair. And it's not, and when it comes to my top four, I listen to them in completely different moods yeah. at completely different times. I'm never, there's never going to be a playlist where they overlap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's, it's just not how it works. Um, I listen to Florence and the Machine probably more than I listen to any of my top three, if I'm being honest with myself. Um, so they should be higher is what you're saying. In theory, but not in execution. Not in practice. I'm more, I'm more saying that my top or... four are like bang, 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 bang. Like they yeah, are 1A through back, D, yeah. essentially. You know, like I just love all of these bands. Now, didn't Florence and the Machine do a song with, uh, was it Chance? Um, you might be thinking Francis and the Lights. Oh, I, that's you're absolutely right. Who is also a really good band that I forgot you about? Forgot they would about not have them. been my top, they wouldn't have been top ten. But I really love Francis and the Lights. Would um, would Florence, Florence and the Machine, Machine have uh, done anything? Dog Days Are Over. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna search. The dog days are over. Oh, the dog days are all done. Run fast for your mother. Run fast for your nope. father. That's nope. a great song. Dog Nothing. Days Are Over. You'll really like that. Uh, Shake it out. Or shake it off, no shake it out. 
Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Oh, oh, oh. No. I can't sing like Florence Welsh, so I might not be doing it justice. Um, no, but I do love that we're both singing each other songs that we don't don't know understand. Yeah, no, yeah. Florence and the Machine's got a, a great catalog, though. Yeah, um, I have totally. You've been thinking of Francis and the Lights every time I've mentioned Florence and the Machine. Every single time. Because um, I think Francis. And it makes perfect sense. Francis is a dude. I Francis think, is a dude. Yeah. Francis Farewell Starlight. That's Florence his name, is not. by the way. Florence uh, is a woman. Florence is a woman. Yeah. Florence Welch. Uh, Florence Welch. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, she's an incredible artist, an incredible songwriter. The only contemporary band I have here. Um, well, and I'm just glad the machine gets some credit. Yeah, the machine rocks. The machine yeah. rocks. They're really good. I mean, they can play the shit out of some instruments. Yeah, um, that's what they do. They're a machine. They are. They they're are. not a um, machine. But they're, yeah, the album. They're the machine. If you if you do check out anything, the 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 album Lungs with Dog Days Are Over, I think you'd really appreciate that song particularly. Okay. Um, Definitely worth uh, definitely worth a look see, I would say. Roger that. But uh, yeah, so Florence and the Machine at four. Top three. We're getting there, man. Yeah, this is it. The Nite Grite. That's correct. So this is mainly this high because at the moment I made this list, well, actually, they weren't even on my radar until we were at the podcast <laughs> today. <laughs> And you brought them up, and I was like, fuck. They're not even on my list. Like, I didn't even think of this them. This changes things. And then they were, like, around seven. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I'm, you know, I'm fiddling with the list. And then I'm like, you know, the reason they're this high is because they might be the last, and we're talking 20, 20 years plus, they might be the last non rap, hip-hop, R&B, CD that I bought. That I bought. Yeah. And I say CD. Uh, you know. Would have been a CD, though. It, w- it was. Yeah. yeah. It was likely the last one I bought um, that was not rap. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, that's. If I was, if I was um, 24, 25 buying this, then I, I, I fucked with it. Like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I must have really enjoyed it, and I did. I, I revisited a lot of their songs. Blink-182, mm. which is fucking Blink-182. Blink-182 is good. I, I mean. What's my age again? What's my age again? Yeah. All the small things. All uh, the. I mean, I miss you. Thing. I miss you. I miss Hello you. Hello there. Yeah. The angel from my nightmare. Yeah. yeah. Um, the and that one The background of the dark. The unsuspecting victim. victim. So, darkness and that about dude, Adam we Song. Can live like Jack and Sally if you want. Yeah, I mean, I Miss You was a big one for me. I mean, I remember when I discovered Blink-182 because this music really used to make me... It's funny, it, it still does make me nostalgic, but there was a period of my life where it like made me particularly nostalgic for movies I used to watch because all it, of their... Because it, it was, I mean, I guess... All of their music would, would was featured in movies. Would this be considered punk? Like was it yes, kind of punk, punk rock. right? Yeah, punk pop, punk I pop, mean, probably more accurately. But I, you know, and again, it's so high because I just that wasn't really a genre of music that I mm-hmm. that I cared about. Yeah, but I I loved that shit. Yeah, like, one eighty two, third good. eye blind, shit like that, that. Those sorts of groups. Um, fucking. Uh, There's another one. Green Day. Green Day. Yeah. Green Day's a really good band that probably we. I mean, Are they? Is Nick? Is it? Uh, I feel bad about this. I tend to get Green Day and Nickelback confused sometimes. Um, is Nickelback? Look at this photograph. That's Nickelback. That's Nickelback. Okay. Yeah. Green Day is. Look uh, at this photograph. <laughs> Nickelback or uh, Green Day is uh, the song they play at graduation. Yes, you're um, absolutely right. Um, yeah. I love that song. That song's really good. It was, a- it was um, actually on the finale of uh, Seinfeld too. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yes. What is that song? How does it go? Yeah, I know it's unbelievable, but in the end, it's right. I hope you had the time of your life. I got there. Yeah, we got there, baby. There it is. But they're not in our top ten. No, they're not. But that's a good fucking song. I mean, that's a good band. But so the way we got there. Same era. Yeah, same era. They had they had more staying power. 
for the sure. Blink 182, but that's because that fucker that sang "I Miss You," uh, he wasn't the lead singer, and then he just um, they put him on. He that. decided to go solo, didn't he? No, he decided to like start talking about aliens a lot. Oh, um, that's <laughs> completely different. <laughs> 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 No, it's crazy. They broke up because he believed in aliens so much. <laughs> Tom DeLong. Tom DeLong is his name. Aliens. Is he that guy? I don't fucking. <laughs> I might have to. I might have to fact check that. I feel like shit went sideways because he didn't. He wasn't that confident as a singer. Yeah. And then they were like, "No, do this shit. Do this shit." Yeah. Um, and he got huge, like. The mm-hmm. response was big. It was yeah. No, you're absolutely right. About like him. I miss you. his name's Tom DeLonge, right? Yeah, Tom DeLonge is an American musician, co-founder, co-lead vocalist, and guitarist of the rock band Blink 182. But he um, he started his own band after that. He yeah, like, fuck. He's you been guys. a member of the band three times, <laughs> 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 to 1992 to 2005, 2009 to 2015, and again since 2022. Uh, so DeLong- whenever he needs a fucking check. Yeah. DeLong has also been involved in UFO research. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> yeah. it's crazy the shit I remember. Yeah. Sticks with you. Yeah, I guess. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember a lot, but I remember that dude ruined Blink-182 because he wanted to go chase aliens. Fucking And be, Tom and be the lead singer of, um, he had his own, does it say, like, what, yeah, here, let's what see. group he started? It would have. It was Air- that. Oh, Angels and Airwaves. That's him. That's Tom I DeLong. actually kind of fuck with Angels and no, Airwaves. No, they're good. They were good. Um, I had no idea that was Tom, that loved the same guy as Blink-182. They actually only have one song that I ever listened to. <laughs> um, so it's funny that I say I ever fucked with Angels and Airwaves. But, uh, oh, now nah, i got to find that song. Sorry. No, do it. Um, derail the whole thing. I'm going to derail the whole thing. we've been on the rails at all. Um, was it Lifeline? Yep, Lifeline. Uh, Lifeline by Angels and Airwaves. I don't know why. I really like that song. Yeah. And I don't know how I discovered it, but I know I like that song. No, it, um, I mean, it, because he went straight into that after his first like break from them. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize he'd been with them three times, especially the last time. I think I knew he'd. Come back yeah, because they put out a, an album a couple years. I mean, my, my, within the last ten years, called like California or something that I remember was a pretty big deal. Um, and he had, you know, I guess enough juice or just momentum to like mm-hmm. that. Angels and Airways, like yeah. they got play. I mean, they were they made several albums. Yeah, yeah. Um, Blink One, so yeah, Blink Top Three. I like that. I like that choice. Um, my three um, is the Jimi Hendrix experience. Okay. Not surprised at all with that. No, you know I like Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. This is definitely, it, it's one of my fa- one of my favorite artists of all time. Um, and the Jimi Hendrix experience has a couple albums that I just absolutely fucking love. It's actually. interesting because you'd have to know, you'd have to be a Jimi Hendrix fan or like lived it or to know that, because all you ever hear about is Jimi Hendrix. Right, yeah. I had to. There's it, a little bit of a fucking loophole you're throwing out it because it was the Jimi bit. Hendrix it's experience. a band. There are yeah, two. There band. are two other dudes. You're right. Who also you're, played instruments. You are right. Um, it is a little bit of a loophole. But you never um, hear about the no, Jimmy you do Hendrix not. Experience. You, you hear about. We just said these songs are by Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. No, because you because uh, you can't hear. Can you hear Jimmy? Uh, yeah, you can't hear Jimmy. But can you hear Jimmy? Oh, I can. Okay. Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy sings. Um, but can you hear him? I know. I know when it's. I know when it's Jimmy. Um, but uh, yeah, no, Jimi Hendrix and the experience. Uh, the Jimi Hendrix experience. Yeah. Uh, Axis Bold as Love is one of my favorite albums of all time. Electric Ladyland, incredible. All, all along the Watchtower is one of my favorite ah, songs. That's yeah. a great song. Um, and just they made some fucking weird shit, and I really, really dig it. Um, nobody could wail on the guitar like he could. Yeah, I mean um, they were living in a time. Oh yeah, and another band in my top three is like around that time too. Um, uh, a couple, a couple of them really. I mean, the be- uh, the next one is a little is a little predates them a, okay. a tad, but uh, not by much. But uh, yeah, the Jimi Hendrix experience just too good to not have a top three. And then and my top three were like, this is my top fucking three. You yeah, know? like so I you had knew, no doubt you about knew. who these people yeah. were. Um, and that's why, like, Florence and the Machine being four was comfortable, you know? I was like, I just I just can't, in good conscience, put Florence and the Machine above the Jimi Hendrix experience. Right. Um, I can't do it. And so, so. that's why it's funny, because, like, I threw Blink-182 in there, like... Yeah, fuck the it. The 11th yeah. hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's my three. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, I'm familiar with Jimi Hendrix. Again, like, it's mm-hmm. amazing. You are fucking 24. I'm 46. Mm-hmm. And you were... 100 percent more well versed more well versed than Jimi Hendrix yeah, yeah. I mean he's, he's just 
I this was a this and my number two have this in common. They were the first artists I went to during that period of time when I was trying to broaden my horizons. Yeah, and they've stuck with me ever since. I feel like you, um, if people are reincarnated, you lived that time. Oh fuck yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm, com- I'm confident there's reincarnation. I know I was there. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm I'm. Fa- I, oh, you're a 70s. I would agree with that. You're like you're I a would 60s. Agree with that. And 70s, I mean, most dude. of my most of my fucking top ten here. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, sixties and seventies, or sixties. Uh, Talking Heads, seventies, eighties. Fleetwood Mac, seventies. Uh, Nirvana, nineties. Uh, you know, so I've got I've got not- Pink Floyd, seventies. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, they're they're all there. Um, my top two are seventies and before. Yeah, I know who your one is. I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> We're going to two. My two. Um, Christmas. Unfamiliar. No, I'm just kidding. Pro- oh, I'm not aware. Christmas, I was, huh? I wasn't aware. Uh, it's a band now? Christmas of 87. It's at my grandma's house. My grandma, my mom's mom, would host. I mean, I had a big extended family. You know, my mom was my mom was one of seven children. Mm-hmm. And we just, tons of cousins. Like, there was probably 50 people that would pack into this tiny little house that my grandma had. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted this cassette tape for Christmas. And I didn't get it. And I didn't say anything about it. And my cousin's Angie, her husband, relatively new, newlywed, Mm -hmm. um, It was a different cat. My dad got into it with him at their wedding. Uh, it's a story for another time. Yeah, for sure. Um, he'd heard that I wanted it. He gave me his own Aww. cassette. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, oh, I heard you wanted it. You can have it. I'm like, no, nah, man. Like, you know, I'm 10. And I'm just like, yeah. no, no, no. You, you know, he's like, take it. Just take it. Appetite for Destruction. Guns and Roses. Guns and Roses. Okay. Um, ah, what a fucking what yeah. a fucking album. Yeah. I mean, Sweet Child of Mine. Welcome to the Jungle. Paradise City. Yeah. Damn. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's and what a flash. Mm-hmm. Um, they did a few more. I mean, I know they did um, Use Your Illusion. Yeah, it blows. Which I... had fuck November Rain mm-hmm. is one is an amazing. Yes. Yeah. That wasn't you know that was on a later album, but the first one. Um, Appetite for Destruction. I had no idea all three of those songs were from the same album. Mr. Brownstone, mm-hmm. you know that song? Yeah, that's, I know. A, I know a lot more Guns N' Roses than I do Aerosmith. That's from that. uh, Mr. Brownstone is from Appetite for Destruction. Um, God, don't cry. November Rain. Those are later. Night Train is from that. It's so it's so easy, easy. Mm-hmm. You know that song? Yes, yes. I That's do. from Appetite for Destruction. Damn, dude, okay. it's fucking deep. Yeah, I need to I need to listen to that album front to back then because I mean I've heard of I've heard a lot of these songs separately, which is kind of rare. Um, they they just had, I mean, hit after hit after hit for a few years, and then I don't know exactly what happened. Um, you know how all the bands fucking go. Yeah, shit. Somebody, happens. yeah, yeah. But Guns N' Roses, bro. Axl mm-hmm. Rose. Guns N' Roses. Slash. Yeah, yeah. Slash. Yeah. He's the shit. Um, yeah. yeah and I'm, I'm fucking... Guns N' Roses is... I feel better about that now than I did earlier. I mean, I... No, yeah, that's... A, I, it makes me... I'm genuinely... He could wail, dude. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, speaking of people on the guitar who probably stand up to Hendrix... Slash has got to be one of them. Yeah. Um, but Axl Rose could sing. Yes. Like, he, he could hit notes, man. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. 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 No doubt. Yeah, Guns N' Roses. That's a, that's a band that I've always it's appreciated. That's a name, too. Oh, fucking awesome. Yeah. Fucking awesome. And if, if his last name is Rose. He's Axl Rose. We're going to name it Guns, Guns and Roses. Roses. Fuck that's man. fucking pimp. It's so bad. That is so cool. So badass. You know, the juxtaposition. Mm-hmm. Um, no, yeah, and that that that'll come back around with my with my one, but uh, 
Yeah, Guns N' Roses, that's a great choice because I, that's a band that I've always been hyper familiar with, but I've never fixated on. I've never dove into them, yeah. but they've just got so many hits that are that transcend time that uh, yes. like uh, I and it, it was it was like a small it was a small mm -hmm. amount of time. I will like um you know it, it's not I just get, they're like more legit like Blink 182. I know they're my mm -hmm. three. They're so much more legitimate than Blink 182. Right, like, yeah, they, no doubt. Like they had a small window like Blink 182 did. Mm -hmm. But what they did but in that time was undeniable. Uh, it's undeniable. Hyper impactful. Yes. Compared. I mean, yeah. it's, it's no. I get that one hundred percent. That's uh, that's that's a real that's a real thing, and that's why that's why fa that's why this is favorites, not best. Right. Um. Because a we're not qualified to tell you who the ten best bands of all time are. You know, like that's just not something I'm prepared to do. No. Um. I don't know. Nah, I know what I think, but uh, you know, but uh, uh, I can't approach this from obje from an objective standpoint. But Guns N' Roses, I'll never. I remember the first time I listened to Paradise City. Actually, Paradise City, like um, Sweet Child of Mine. I mean, Welcome <laughs> to the Jungle is on. Ha ha ha! Step Brothers, yes. uh, you know. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the first time I listened to Paradise City was actually I can't remember what restaurant we were at, but it was like it had really specific decor that was like it was neon lighting and it was probably more 80s 80s themed yeah um, i was there with the lightners um, oh really okay. yeah oddly enough um and the song came on and scott was like oh this song fucking rocks i was <laughs> like <laughs> he was like i fucking love this song yeah uh and and brant knew it and stuff and i was like oh because like that was my thing back then was that like i remember they were specifically impressed with my ability to remember every lyric to every song i ever heard right and they were like ha, ha, you don't know the fucking lyrics to this song <laughs> gotcha you know and i was like i don't but i like it i dig it a lot you know uh, paradise city yeah that uh, uh take me down to paradise Dude. city where yeah no that shit goes yeah that's good yeah guns I, and roses i dig yeah. it i dig it um but my two every bit as much uh every bit as much legitimacy okay if not more so well, I believe it. Uh, you know, I think just, uh, I think your list overall. Is well, just more uh, there are very than few. There are very no. I mean, like th this is you're, you're it dropping speaks... Jimi Hendrix experience. I'm throwing Blink 182. Out Blink 182 there. rocks though. Uh, th that's the thing is that like it, I, I more say that because there are very few bands that hold up in terms of legitimacy compared to the Beatles. Um, okay, I thought that was your uh, one. Yeah, that's my two. That's what makes the one the exciting. The Beatles. Uh, the Beatles. Um, I love the Beatles. Uh, yeah, it's hard not to. You know, there's a reason. There I thought you were going to go monkeys. Monkeys rock. I like the monkeys. They do actually rock. Yeah, I do like the monkeys. Um, I actually dove into them a little bit this. Did last you? Week I mean, they, to, they are good, but uh, um, yeah. I mean, I have a lot of opportunity to do. Like, whenever I'm at work, I have fucking six hours where nobody is talking to me essentially, right. and I can listen to music. So, like, I, I listened to a couple monkeys albums this week. Um, Mamas and Papas got some play. Um, you know, um, but uh, the Beatles that they're. Along I mean, with the Jimmy the Hendrix Beatles. experience, yeah. They're... Whenever I was like trying to broaden my horizons, and, that, and see, so that's what I respect about your list, and it's also what I respect about my list mm -hmm. is I know that the Beatles are, are the it, fucking is, Beatles. is one of yeah. the greatest yeah. groups ever. But I, true to me, yeah, I couldn't put it on there because I don't listen to, to the, the Beatles. fucking Beatles. Yeah. you know what I mean. Like, so it's not my, you know, right? But I, but. No Again, matter how so hard I, I try, I respect it because I know you have listened yes. to it. You, you're no qualified to try, fucking say that. Every year, my Spotify rap rolls around. Yeah, every year, top five of the Beatles are going to be on it. Yeah. I can't help it. And no matter how much, I, like this past month, there's a, there's this app I have that I kind of like keep up with to check on that sort of thing. Yeah, like because I love stats. You know, I love stats. I'm a big fan of stats. Stats guy. Um, fucking but, stats uh, guy. Over love here. stats. Uh, statistics. They it's rock. all about the stats. Um, specifically, my give me stats. data. Give me data. Yeah, I love data. Or data. Data on what I is it been data doing. or data for you? Uh, data. Data. Big data. It's got to be data. It's so much cooler. It can't be data. Data. Data's weak. Yeah. It's Pussy a fucking shit. soft a. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I don't like a soft a. Ah. No, I need a sharp a. Eh? <laughs> 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 no, but uh, the the Beatles are just they're just that good, you know. Um, I mean, agreed. They're yeah. they're incredible, and uh, so what's your favorite Beatles song of all time? I will tell you that my the, putting you on the spot. The song that I have the most nostalgic attachment to because it was in the wake of my knee surgeries again. Um, the Beatles were actually the first band I went to to try to be like. That's a good starting place. You know, let's, yeah, let's like, see. Hey, yeah. You know, the Beatles are a pretty big fucking deal. Yeah. Um, and 
part of it was that I was like, I knew I was going to be on like a lot of painkillers. I was like, what's high music? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. let's let's figure that out. Yeah. And I was like, the Beatles are pretty pretty good high music. Jimmy's your three. Um, Jimmy so Jimmy was there too. You know, like that, <laughs> yeah. that was, that's why I'm like, I discovered them when I was on fucking Percocet. You know, right. um, but uh, with a little help from my friends. Uh, that's yeah, that's Joe, a great Joe one. Cocker. Yes. Um, I think he has the more possibly the more popular, the more version popular, of famous yeah. version of that. Yeah, theirs was first though. I believe so. Yeah, uh, I get by no, with, with a little, little help, help from my, my friends. friends. Yeah, I the Wonder Years, bro. With a little help. Yeah, mm-hmm. don't get me going on that path. No, yeah, we, we can't do sitcoms spend all, and shows. We could, well, we will one day. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, no. So th- off the top of my head, that's the one that I always kind of go to. Strawberry Fields Forever is a really good song that I like a lot. Um, but the funny thing about little help from my friends it's it's a different sound mm-hmm. like, yeah it's a little quicker the pace 100 you know with with joe cocker it was it was drawn out it was slower slower but yeah with them, like, ah, 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 my friends. one of my i think my favorite album of theirs actually would be rubber soul which is kind of i think it comes before it's before abbey road um it's before let it be which uh, let it be. That's a great fucking song. Uh, so it predates "Here Comes the Sun" and and all that. Ye- Yellow submarine. It's sun. before Sergeant Pepper's. Yellow submarine is a fucking yeah. great song we too. We all live in a yellow. I submarine. learned. Listen to this, dude. I learned that song in second grade. Um, in music class, mm. we sang. We all live in a yellow submarine. Yeah. In music class. Fuck yeah! And we had no idea. We're yeah. just like, yeah, here we go. Fuck yeah, here it is. Singing this shit, bro. Hey Jude. Hey Jude. That's yeah. that's a really good na 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 na. I love that. Like the Eleanor Rigby. Um, that's a big one for me. Uh, let's who see. sings. Um, is it just John Lennon? Imagine there's no. Oh, well, that's yeah. yeah. That's that's just John Lennon. Um. And that. I could be way off, and I'm going to be embarrassed, but I won't be. I'm not going to be embarrassed. I'll be embarrassed. I won't be. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Um, we all shine on Ooh, like the moon and, and the stars and, and the, the sun. sun. Is that a Beatles song? Is that a John Lennon song? Or is that I, just some fucking British dude who I want to give? That is a John Lennon song. Okay. That's called it, that's called Instant Karma. Instant um, Karma. It's yeah. also it's also Yoko Ono. They're both they're both. Oh, on never it. mind. Oh. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, she ruined the Beatles. But uh, Michelle, that's another one. Like, Michelle, my bell. I don't know. Don't know you, that. No, that's I a am good fucking, one. Uh, no, I do not know that uh, one. But yeah, Abbey Road was loaded with, some, oh, darling. You know, oh, darling, please so, believe I don't me. Wanna, I don't want to get you away from the songs. Come together right, right now. now. Over me. me. That's that's another like I could just I could go all day with these. Yeah. The Beatles rock. So are you of I gotta think you're educated in all this. Yeah. Are you of the opinion that Yoko Ono broke up the Beatles and ruined ruined everybody's experience of the Beatles because she I tend to disagree with that take. Um I think she was an easy scapegoat. Oh yeah, conspiracy That's... theorist over here. <laughs> yeah, no. Who did it? Was it Paul? Was it George? I, I think it was. Was I it think Ringo? They were all fucking done. Uh, Ringo. I think they were all fucking done. Is kind of how I look at uh, how I look at the Beatles by that. By that Paul. Point. Paul is the only one that's with us. Yes, he's the only one that's still alive. Yeah. Um, Bill McCartney. He's not here right now with us. No, he's, he's not in the room or anything. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he is for me, not for you. No. Um, I don't even fuck. He's I, sitting right there. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, have you, did you ever watch Dewey Cox, The Walk Hard Story? Wow. John well, C. Riley? I know. Yeah. <laughs> I was just doing that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did not watch it, but you're I know exactly movie? what you're talking about because yeah. I love John C. Riley. I need to watch that movie bad. I've never seen it. I know there's a scene. So is there something regarding. There's a scene where he goes to India and meets the Beatles during their phase where they went to India. And it's played by Justin Long, Jason Schwartzman. Paul oh, Rudd, wow! Um, Paul Rudd and Jack Black, they are the Beatles. Oh my um, God, really? And, and they're all doing a very exaggerated fucking English accent. Uh, accent. You know? oh, and they, yeah. you know, like Jack Black's Paul McCartney. You know, he's, Dude, he's, he's saying he's Paul I McCartney. love that. And Paul Paul Rudd's John Lennon, and he's you know he's like, oh Paul, you know. <laughs> Dude, 
my my girlfriend. Yoko. I didn't realize that. I mean, because Dewey Cox is kind of playing like a very a Johnny Cash type, right? Isn't it's that a kind spoof. Of... It's essentially a spoof of the Johnny Cash Walk the Line pick. Oh. Um, with Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, but it, it came before um, that, though, didn't it's it? It's a couple years after. Is it really? It's a spoof of it, yeah. Um, it's pretty much like James Mangold, the director of Walk the Line, is like famously butthurt about Dewey Cox. Because uh, he's Walker like, story. fuck that. Yeah, fuck now that he's making movie. a Bob Dylan biopic, which almost feels like a spoof of Dewey Cox, which is funny because like that's the point of the Dewey Cox movie is that like if you're mo- if you're making a music biopic, there's only so much you can do. It's going to feel like this. You know? Right. Like, uh, that's, yeah. that's what it's going to be like. So they all feel the same. Um, and I'm a sucker for them most of the time. But uh, I need to watch that movie bad. But, yeah, there's a part where the Beatles are played by Jason Schwartzman, Justin Long, Paul Rudd, that's and Jack amazing. Black. Uh, and they're all doing the, we're, you know, because we are the Beatles. And they're <laughs> yeah, it But the Beatles. I, I love the Beatles. So they they are my two. Okay. That's, that's well-deserved. Top one is your favorite band Number ever. Number one, and I feel, I feel good about this. Um, I don't know when I discovered them, although I think it was probably in high school, high school, high school age. Mm-hmm. Um, it the, all their music's aged really well, mm-hmm. and they were something back in the sixties. No. Um. Oh, I actually knew a song by their lead singer. Um. Before I knew any of their songs, uh, center field, because um, you know I'd watch like this week in baseball. Put me in coach. I'm ready yeah. to play. John Fogerty today and. I knew that song from the time I was I like actually five did not or know six. that was a solo John Fogerty song. Yeah, I that is not, not a CCR song. Yeah, and it's CCR is number one. Fuck yeah, it Credence, is. Credence Clearwater Revival. Revival. Um, I mean, uh, now you're the only reason I know who CCR is. For you sure. You know what's so funny is I was I was debating on this list on the way to the pumpkin patch on the way back, and I got my my top ten done mm-hmm. on the. Your mom was driving. In the car, I said, look, this is what I got. And I finished with CCR, and she goes, I said, what do you think? Do you think that's an okay list? I mean, just lie to me. And she's like, I definitely think CCR, because I'd never heard a song of theirs. I'd never heard of them Mm -hmm. until I met you. Yeah. She was like, so it's been pretty consistent. That's uh, over over the years. That makes a lot Um, of sense. I remember remember whenever I was setting up my first iPod, CCR was on it, you know, because because you like CCR. And and one of my downloading it from LimeWire and shit. We're getting CCR off LimeWire. Yes. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) LimeWire. There's a deep cut. Dude. I remember you playing video games with Jeremy. Jeremy was at the house. Yeah. Bubba would come over, his brother Bubba would come over and we'd just just play you you'd play video games and yeah. we'd play music. Fuck and yeah. Your mom, I don't know, she was at work or <laughs> um I mean you just go th- Fortunate Sun, Bad mm-hmm. Moon Rising. Have you yeah. ever se- have you ever seen the rain? That's my favorite. That's my favorite CCR song. Bad Moon Rising? No, have you ever seen the rain? Have you ever seen the rain? I want to know. Have you, have you ever the... seen the rain? I think of that song. I want to know. Every time it rains. rains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that's well, they have another rain. Who will stop the rain? Do you know? Yeah, that? that's Who'll that stop too. The rain. Uh, looking out my back door. Mm-hmm. Ooh, looking out ooh, my back door ooh, is a fucking ooh. good. Looking ooh, out my ooh, back door. Down on the corner. Down on the corner. Yeah, yeah. Out in the street. Uh, run through the jungle. Lodi. Are you yeah. familiar with the song? Stuck in a Lodi yes. again. Yes. Um, traveling band. I heard it through the grapevine midnight special. Uh, long as I can see the light, but I have to get down to Susie Q. I have to get down to about the twentieth song on top songs to get my favorite song. Mm-hmm. Someday never comes. Ooh, is probably one of my top five favorite songs of all time. 
All right. I'm willing to say that. And you're that. comfortable saying I'm that. I'm willing to say yeah. that. Yeah. Um, because it's a song that isn't like the most popular. You know, like you, you think of all these other songs when you think of CCR, but Someday Never Comes, man. Mm hmm. Oh, is yeah. And I don't even know how I was introduced to him. I, I know for a fact it was, and it was in high school. Right. Um, someone with better taste than me probably said, hey, you need to listen to this. And a lot of that shit is like, um, Someday Never Comes is their greatest hits mm -hmm. that was released in 72. Right. So. Pre, yeah, it's pre -70s. When the fuck was that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, and their music holds up. Like, no, it you does. could throw that on right now mm -hmm. and it just goes. Yeah, it does. Um, you threw out uh, looking out my back door and I was like, holy shit, I forgot that one existed. Like, I Illinois. forgot about that one. Out the front door. I oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, I love that song. Do, 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 looking out my back door. Yeah, that's good stuff. I love that song. CCR, I'm glad that's your top one because yeah. that makes that makes perfect sense. I, I A second ago when I said I, I, I'm having trouble thinking of who your number one is and you went, then you started talking, you said, mine you know, goes back to the 60s. I was like, boom, Creedence Clearwater Revival. Yeah. I knew exactly who it was as Man. soon as you said it. Um, yeah, no, that's good stuff. I actually was clueless that Centerfield was not a CCR song. It was a John Fogarty song. John Fogarty, yeah. yeah. Um, solo situation. I mean, he's very obviously the voice of that band then because I was... Yeah, such a distinct voice, too. Yeah, 100%. And, a, and an actually good voice, too, I would argue. Not <laughs> not not the way that Bob... Because like, I think Bob Dylan and David Byrne have good voices, but they're, they're distinct voices, not talented singers, Yeah, I would John say. Fogarty's singing. He can sing his yeah, ass off. Yeah. Um, I mean, one of my favorite baseball songs of all time. You know, my I remember, oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I remember about thinking baseball. Like, uh, I how love can you not baseball. be romantic about baseball? Yeah, yeah. And center field is just mm -hmm. like, look at me, I could be yeah. Put me in, coach. Like, I yeah. love everything yeah. about that. No, song. that's the good stuff. That is the good stuff. CCR is a brilliant number one pick for you, and that Thank makes you. a lot of sense. Yeah. So I feel like your top five really fucking brought it home. Yeah, uh, Blink One Eighty Two at three. I'm a little worried. You're a little. Yeah, I, I don't think you need to be. I don't think okay, you need to be. Blink One Eighty Two rocks. You know what? I, yeah, my top five brought it home. I mean, all the small things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, whenever I listen to one Blink One Eighty Two song, you gotta go on. I end up listening to more yeah. Blink One Eighty Two yeah. songs. So like, that's why I'm like, I don't think you need to feel bad about that. Um, okay, then I won't. But yeah, CCR, top one. That makes perfect sense for you, and I, I really, really do dig that. But uh, yeah, my number one. This is <clears throat> this is tough. This is tough, and I, I feel like I have to justify it because my two, no. my two and three. Have you heard my list? No, but my two and three were the Beatles and Jimi Hendrix experience, right. which I have a much longer and deeper connection to. Um, oh, so th this is a relatively, relatively recency bias. Oh, um, oh, but I've latched on so hard and have not let go that I can't stop listening to Sly and the Family Stone. Um, yeah. I fucking love Sly. And the so, Family what Stone. put you on to that? Um, I don't know what, I don't know how I just kind of happened. I mean, a lot of, like a lot of music that I get on will be on a show or on, yeah, a, movie, on a movie and I'll yeah. look it up. Yeah, 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 for Is sure. It, could that have happened? That could have happened. I don't think it did though. What, um, I can't really remember what led me to Sly and the Family Stone. I think that. Everyday people. Everyday people. I yeah. love that song. Uh, my favorite, my favorite song of theirs, and th this is where you know you just said that you're comfortable declaring "Someday Never Comes" one of your top five ever songs yeah. ever. I have that with Sly and the Family Stone. Ooh. Their rendition of "K Sera Sera" uh, is one of my favorite songs ever. Um, I fucking love their version of "K Sera Sera," and uh, I've also always just had a. I've always appreciated that song. I actually didn't know what the original version of it was. I I, I don't know. It's from Can a movie. Can you tell me? Uh, it's by Doris Day. Oh, um, wow, okay. Uh, it's it's in an Alfred Hitchcock movie, um, The Man Who Knew Too Much. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, random as fuck. I actually, I watched that movie a couple months ago, and I was like, oh, she's singing Que Sera Sera. Cool. It's the first time it was ever first fucking time, sung. yeah. And I was like, I didn't know that until I, mean, I looked up. Day, right? Yeah, and yeah. I looked up. I looked it up from because I found. Th I think that's how I found it. Was K like I think I was looking for a version of K Sera Sera, and I found Sly and the Family Stones. So uh, there's actually a really good movie called Heather's with Winona Ryder mm. and Christian Slater. 
Yeah, I'm um, very familiar. Yeah, that uh, it's a great movie. It opens with a version of Que Sera Sera, um, and I was like, ah, oh, yeah, this would have been better if it was the Sly and Family Stone version, though. Uh, Cut to credits. And Sly and, and the Family Stone version. I was yeah. like, you fucking get it, Heathers. I so love they, you. Yeah. You know, like, they, uh, they, they I was saluted, like, you get yeah. it. You get it. Uh, they said, hey, yeah. we did that we as, heard a, as an ode. Yeah, we heard you. Yeah. We heard you. Yeah. Um, no, but Sly and the Family Stone. I actually just, I read a. Uh, I, read I, a I am fucking, I wouldn't have guessed that. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, and, and that's we why. We don't even talk anymore. <laughs> No, I, mean, I would I've talked never to you about have Sly and Family that. Stone recently, um, relatively recently. One mention a couple months ago uh, is right. the last time we talked about. Totally Sly should and have picked Stone. up on that. that yeah, was you your pre- favorite. I mean, fucking you, you need to pay of all time. Dad. Yeah, like um, oh, it's obviously his number one of well, all no, time. And that's that's what's interesting is that like I didn't settle on them being my favorite of all time until I was like making this list. Yeah, and I was like, they I was been. confident to put them top three. You know, I was like, they're up there with the Beatles and Jimi Hendrix. And when I did that, I was like, I'm being real. At this moment, they are my favorite band of all time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, uh, I listen to them more than anybody. Um, I so. wish that we had like a following that we could put our two lists on like some sort of voting. Right. Yeah. Just to see how badly I would lose. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got a better top ten? Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? It'd be pretty fun. I mean, It'd be pretty cool. You never to see. know. You'd probably you never get, know. You would get I'd at get, least. I'd get some sympathy. You'd votes. get 25 percent of the votes, and and it I would might be, win the fucker. You might. You threw you got Bon Jovi in there. Bon Jovi's fucking beloved. Yeah, I know, I know. They're so great. Aerosmith. <laughs> uh, you got Aerosmith. Uh, you know, I will say this: my list is diverse. Mm-hmm. It started with Huey Lewis and the, and the news. news. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> you knew fucking shit was it was, it was getting real. It was from about there. to pop. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait till we do duos. Um, um. Well, here's what we're gonna do. Right, we're gonna include when we do duos. That should probably be all genres. Period including rap oh man oh, i don't know there's man. a lot of great rap duos though uh, real quick not that they'd be in my top 10 but is oasis a duo they'd have to count it as a duo yeah. right they're brothers they hate each other yeah. yeah okay i didn't know if there was like a third one. They, they have a few the gallagher's fucking, baby dude um liam hall and oates Hall and Oates, you know. Yeah, I know that's you, uh, know. you throw out Huey Lewis in the news, I know Hall and Oates is you in there. Know. You know, <laughs> you know Daryl Hall. Yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna say John. John. Oates. I feel yeah. like it's John Oates. Daryl Hall and John Oates. Yeah, but uh, dude, uh, uh, fucking Daryl Hall. Um, I've heard stories. I've watched like different shit. Um, where it'll be, you know, a black person that's like, I listened to that. No and, idea he was white. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, when I found out that man was white. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, Outcast. Oh, of course. Yeah. But, That's my time. There, there, there's no scenario I, I, in which they're not my favorite duo of all time. Yeah. I mean, so you're if already given away. If we'd away. done that, if we'd done duos included in here, they would, they would be my number one. Uh, well, duos and rap. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If we done, if, I if, just if you know duo, if duos and rap had been included in this, Outcast would have topped my list. Like Outcast is my they favorite would be your number one. Like they they are my favorite. So you rapper. you kind of wish we'd have done like the overall because really Sly and Sly and the Family Stone, the Family Stone is not. Is I mean not like your, they are my favorite non rap band of all time, which is why I'm I'm comfortable okay. making those distinctions because I've done so many of these lists. Yeah, that like I like on the podcast that that doesn't really change things for me. Like okay. I think it's important to shine light on things I wouldn't normally shine light on. You know what I'm saying? Fair. Um. Yeah, the duos that that opens That'll it be up. Tough. That will be tough. Um. But yeah, we'll we'll come back to it eventually. But yeah, let's go ahead and run back through. We we we'll go uh, ten to one if you're comfortable with that, and we can top this episode off at uh, a a cool two hours twenty minutes. Oh man, I hope you guys are still with us. Beefy, beefy one. Just stick with us. Ten Huey Lewis in the news. <laughs> There's an exclamation point behind that on my notes too. By the way, fuck yeah, there is nine. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bon Jovi. Mm-hmm. Eight, Alabama. Seven, in sync. Six, Coldplay. Fuck yeah. Fuck, man. Five, Boys to Men. Four, Aerosmith. Three, Blink-182. Two, Guns N' Roses. One, Creedence Clearwater Revival. Do you kind of wish Blink-182 was at five now, now that you're looking back? Is that kind of where you feel like it could have dropped to? 
Yeah, maybe. If anything, it would be Blink-182 at five. Everybody moves up. Yeah, So yeah. Boys to Men at four, Aerosmith at three. Yeah, right. Probably. Mm-hmm. That's probably... That's probably where it more be. accurate. I mean, but I'm my go ten with... through six is just a goddamn mess. Yeah, <laughs> Huey Lewis. Well, my, in the ten news. Th- my ten through six is actually now an eleven through six. If that helps, that's true. I don't know though. I mean, Alabama deserves it. No, that's it. why I'm like. I mean, Huey Lewis in the news, fucking bangers. Bon Jovi, Alabama. Bon Jovi, the, the, bangers. The, Alabama, bangers. The in sync and Coldplay, the seven and See, six that's is kind just, of a that's just macho man insecurity. You're right. You man. know, you gotta you gotta be happy with what you, you with know what, what I you appreciate like. that. So. Yeah. You know what. Fuck the haters. Fuck the haters. You like NSYNC and Coldplay. You know what? I fucking love NSYNC. I mean, I'm a man. I don't like NSYNC. I love NSYNC. <laughs> <laughs> then you're not a man. Real men love NSYNC. Yeah, it's They true. love Coldplay. <laughs> they love Swallowed in the Sea. God, Swallowed grow, in the Sea gets me fucking going. Grow a pair, pussy. <laughs> Viva la vida, bitch. <laughs> All right. Now uh, you. Now no. you talk okay. Well, my 11's gold spot. Yeah, uh, my a ten. Shitty, now we're in the a top shitty ten. ten pick. Yeah, ten, oh, wait, eleven. Uh, ten, the Highwaymen. Nine, Pink Floyd. Eight, Radiohead. Seven, Nirvana. Um, oh, six, Fleetwood seven. Mac. Uh, five, Talking Heads. Four, Florence and the Machine. Three, The Jimi Hendrix Experience. Two, The Beatles. And one, Sly and the Family Stone. And with that, we can conclude this episode. I think I won. Yeah, I think you did too. At least fifty-five percent of the vote. Minimum. I'd give you sixty. You're probably right. 65? You're probably right. 100? Uh, thank you all that voted. For yeah, me. everybody who voted for Father, thank you. <laughs> really helped him in his security about liking NSYNC. But, Baby, uh, bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. But uh, yeah, with that, we will conclude this episode of the Penny Bloom Podcast, and we will be back tomorrow with uh, a little bit more for you on uh, Death by Television. We're reaching the halfway point on The Penguin. Yeah. Wednesday, full from a Star Wars podcast continues. The Rebels Rewatch continues. Uh, this Friday, we've got The Sentimentalists with The Empire Strikes Back live commentary. That's a great yeah. movie. Love that one. Um, yeah, so we got a lot going on. Check it all out. Leave a five-star rate and review and download wherever you might be listening. And I was Colton Robertson. I was joined by my father, Justin Robertson. Thank you for being here, Daddy. Thanks for having me. I love you. I love you, too. And with that, remember, peace, love, and bloom. And bye, 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 bye. bye. bye.